They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it! You're acting like a child! Look, they're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. John! Shall, shall, shall we play a game? Why, yes! I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Getting geeky all up in your podcast. It's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll introduce my guests here in a moment. But first, we have a vital question from one of our ga- uh, guests. Guest. Well, I guess guests kind of fits into the main show topic. But before we get into the main show topic, our well, he, guest. He's a ghoul. He's working. He is a ghoul. Ha- has a question for us. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Mike, who is your favorite Joker from movies or TV? Ooh. Are you talking about the the, the clown prince of crime type Joker or the yes, homicidal Batman's, modern Batman's Joker? arch enemy? Yeah. Any but, Joker but, you please. Any Joker you please. Any Joker, Joker at all. Mm-hmm. I'm blanking on his name, but he was in The Dark Knight. That's Heath Ledger. Heath, Heath Ledger. Yes, that's it. That's, that's my favorite. That is hard to beat Heath Ledger's <laughs> Joker. He was real I hard. really did not expect to have liked him. And then I watched it and it's like, wow, he's um he's got a nice mix of the humor and the homicidal. I like that. That's good. Yeah, yeah I got a he was great. Uh and word on the street, I don't know how true it is. I don't know if it's an urban legend or whatever. He got so deep into that role. It, it kind of led to some of his depression. And when he got on the drugs, I think that led to what happened now I, that I don't know if that's true or not, but I've, I've heard that more than once that that's how deep he went into the role. Um, I so anyway, what about you, Chris? And for this vital question that's directly <laughs> related to our show topic today, who's your favorite Joker hope, in film? That story's not true. <laughs> I'm going to go <laughs> yeah, with Jack Nicholson though. It's a good Joker. Yeah. He's, he was my favorite. The first one that like really made me laugh, Cesar Romero that I grew up with, he wasn't that funny. But uh, Jack, Nicholson well, he wasn't made me committed laugh. enough to the role. Because Cesar <laughs> Romero wouldn't shave his mustache, he wasn't yeah, committed was enough to the role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That, I mean, Cesar Romero from the Batman TV show back in the '60s—that was like your clown prince of crime, right? Kind of and soldier. I liked him, yeah. but comparing him yeah. to Nicholson or Ledger is kind of apples and oranges, yeah. Really. I think that, so the thing with Heath Ledger's Joker that I like a lot and, and how they treated him in, um, in the dark Knight is he's like a chaos agent. He just materialized out of nowhere. They never gave you his origin story. They were like, his clothes are cut. We can't even track where he got his clothes. His clothes are all custom made. Da, da, da. And that, that to me is the perfect Joker. He's just like, almost like an embodiment of chaos. Um, You know, as much as I love Alan Moore, uh, you know, when he wrote the killing joke and they came up with a red hood and that origin for the Joker, uh, which they borrowed a lot for, for Nicholson's Joker in the Burton Batman movie, when he falls into the vat of chemicals, I think the Joker works better when, when he just pops out of nowhere and you, you, cause Nicholson, you at least understand his motivations. You knew who he was before he was Joker and then after and did it all that. But he was great. Nicholson was a great Joker. Um, you know, in fact, I heard that Nicholson, I just read this the other day, that he loved that uh, role so much that he watched the Batman 89 movie like over and over and over, like at his house or whatever. So, um, that's kind yeah, of I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little creepy, isn't it? But now he was fun. Um, my My beef with the Batman 89 Joker was that for a long time, I called that movie, the Joker with a little bit of Batman in it. Cause there was so much Joker. Uh, but I mean, I don't complain now. Now I just said I can enjoy the movie, but as a, I think I was 18, 17 or 18. It came out. Uh, 89. Yeah. 89. The, the summer in between my junior and senior years. And, you know, I was like, where's Batman? <laughs> um, you know, he's not in it as much. But anyway, what? 
I was going to say, I think they were trying to aim for the mysterious figure in the shadows for Batman in that. And yeah. unfortunately, part of that just led to him being, well, in the background. But it was, I mean, I, I love that movie. I, you know, I, I, I think it's more than stood the test of time uh, for the 89 Batman and Michael I Keaton. I like some films. Know. Yeah, not all, not every films. I, I like all the Batman movies on some level. So I'm a Batman fan. Okay. I can tell. So I'll give my answer. <laughs> I'll give my answer uh, so that we can move on and I'll introduce our guests and we'll get into our main topic. We were chatting before the show. Uh, and then Chris was like, hey, who's your favorite film Joker? And I was like, no, 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 we got to put this in the podcast. So <laughs> so that's what happened. This is all my fault. Uh, so, yes, you're listening to the right podcast if you're here for zombies. Um, I, Heath Ledger, you can't. I mean, that was just such an amazing, um, an amazing, amazing uh, performance. So I got to go with Heath Ledger if I'm going to go with a um, – a, a Joker performance in the TV show Gotham. I can't remember the kid's name. He's red haired and he did sort of a proto Joker. Uh, I can't remember his name and he was great. Uh, he, 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 it was, I, man, in Monaghan. So I can't remember his name, but he, he embodied the creepy spirit of Joker really well. I got to give him a nod and I've also got to give a nod. Most people hated it. Um, and it's not my preferred Joker, but uh, the meth head Joker from the first Suicide Squad, if you watch the version that has extended scenes in it, that, it's really, it's really good stuff between him. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a nerd, man. I'm going to watch all that stuff. Uh, and it's really good. There's a really great Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, and if you if you like, look, this is an alternate universe Joker. It's not the main. I think it was a Jared Leto. I think that that, mm -hmm. that Joker. Um, if you take it like this is an alternate universe Joker, and just roll with it, I, I actually think he did a better job as the Joker than than people give him credit for. But it, you know, Meth Head Joker was such so <laughs> crazy. It just people, you know. Uh, Blew back on it. And then if you watch the uh, Snyder cut of Justice League, Jared Leto plays a plays the Joker again in a scene in the future. And it's pretty great. So um, but but anyway, um, there you go. So. All right. Let me, I got to get this kid's name that played Joker that played the Joker in the Gotham TV series. Should we one, pause the tape? <laughs> no, no, no. People get to listen to me. Uh, people so get to we listen agree to on Ledger. That's. Which yes. will be the only time we agree on anything during this f this podcast, yeah. I suspect. I don't know. Yeah. I think we might agree <laughs> on Who played? Else. All right. So the the character in Gotham was called Jeremiah Velasca. Uh, he was like kind of a proto-joker. Uh, and he was portrayed by Cameron Monaghan, who's the same actor that there's a couple of uh, Star Wars, I think it's Jedi Outcast. There's a couple of Star Wars video games where he. This is the first audio footnote of which will probably be several for as much ground as we cover uh, in this podcast. And we're just talking off the cuff uh, in many cases. But the the game that Cameron Monaghan uh, did the motion capture and the acting in uh, the Star Wars games are actually Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. Jedi Outcast, you know, came many, many years uh, before those. That was the acting and the uh, motion capture on on that. So anyway, all right, moving on. So please, uh, please we're here to talk Star about Wars. zombies. <laughs> yes. We're here to talk about zombies. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah. We're eight minutes in. <laughs> and, and and we're here to talk about zombies. So as I said before we started uh, recording, I said I break every rule in podcasting and have the have the massive massive thronging fan base to to show for it. But I'm here to have fun, and I want my guests to have fun too. And I think that that's the first thing to do, and and just just have a fun podcast. So uh, on the podcast today is uh, we have two. Two distinguished, distinguished gentlemen, both of whom who have been on the show before. Uh, 
I'm just going to go in order of the video on my StreamYard app, not any order of actual importance in life. So I'm take older. no. Yeah, you're all. Yeah, we'll age before uh, <laughs> age before bad taste in zombie movies. So I'll introduce you first. What? Uh, <laughs> 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 we have Chris Holmes returning to the show. Uh, Chris is a Chris is a great guy. Uh Love hanging out with Chris. He's a lot of fun. Um, he's he's an artist, uh, you know, avid D and D player. Uh, I think you've got a couple of products coming out from Paysetter, or that are already out that include both material from your father and you. If if I if I understand correctly, is that right? That's right. Mostly my father. But yeah, yeah mostly, and then you're contributing also, some art. I am on the show to be the old guy. The old and guy also to brag that I saw some of these movies in the theater. And the theater. All right. Well, yeah. So the reason we're doing this show, I mean, I love zombie movies, but Chris is for like a year has been like, hey, can we do a zombie show? And I kept saying, yeah. And then finally, I saw him at North Texas RPG Con in, well, I saw Mike and Chris. I said, dude, the next show is going to be zombies. So because you've been so patient. Um, and then, of course, your father is J. Eric Holmes of uh, Holmes Basic D&D fame uh but but i have to i have to stress again that that chris is a super cool dude in his own right and i really like hanging out with him so and then we have mike stewart michael stewart aka mike aka dm mike one of the halflings on the save for half podcast uh, also of the new found in the ruins podcast and uh today's episode i guess is a I don't know if cross promotion is the right word, but it's also to help. I'll promote. pimp it over there, so you know. Yeah, so we're gonna pimp. I'm pimping found in the ruins uh, here, uh, and then he's pimping. Uh, I guess Shane plays this episode over on found in the ruins, so it's sort of a uh, a cross promotion kind of thing where the interests align between found in the ruins and uh, and Shane plays love. geek talk now. What's that? It's a zombie love fest. We it is. Love- it's a zombie love story. Yeah. It's a zombie love, love story, which means that somebody's <laughs> going to get their brains eaten before everything's said and done. Mike, tell, of course, you're on the Save for Half podcast. And you used to be on uh, Save or Die podcast. So, uh, you know, people know you from there. But tell us a little bit about Found in the Ruins. It is a podcast with my brother from another mother, Doc Benny, who... <laughs> If you've been at North Texas, you've probably seen rushing to and from Battletech or Aliens games. Um, And we talk about post-apocalyptic literature, movies, games, whatever, what have you. If it's post-apoc, we'll talk about it. And our and so far it's been fantastic. I really enjoy it. And the well, Facebook you haven't hit, you haven't heard too. the latest episode yet. So it's, <laughs> okay, it's still being edited. That's, the warning. that's the comparison between. The 1968 and 1990 Nights of the Living Dead. Yeah, which we'll touch on a little bit here, but I'll I'll let you save your powder for your episode, <laughs> uh, unless you just want to blow off all your powder here. So, uh, well, we'll get to the, both of those are on the list. Chris has sent us a list of of zombie a comprehensive movies, list, a comprehensive list of zombie movies uh, that. Also have his top fifteen, and so, no remakes. We're not going to talk about no remakes because he said uh, it was a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah, well, we can we can mention Savini's nineteen ninety Night of the yeah. Living Dead remake. If you mention all the nights, night. I mean that'd be what eight or nine, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, there's Night of the Animated Dead. There's Night <laughs> See, of the Living Dead. There's Night of the Living Dead in color. There's Night of the Dead three D. <laughs> you know. Be, because the copyright notice was left off of Night of the Living Dead, that thing is everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, uh, which, you know, <laughs> it basically led to Romero's career. It was a happy accident for him, if I understand correctly. But uh, so we're, we're going to be talking zombie movies. Uh, but folks, please do go check out Found in the Ruins podcast. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy Found in the Ruins. Mike started it, if I understand correctly, because he was lonely for the podcast at Ground Zero that ended, or is maybe kind of not ended now. Um, but it's a it's it's great. It I mean, it's when undead. you say post, 
Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it is shambled back to unlife. Uh, <laughs> so when you talk, uh, there's so much that covers under the umbrella of post apoc Mad Max, zombies, uh, prepper fiction. I mean, whatever, and that's just barely touching it. And and asteroids, Mike's current micro asteroids, you name it. Yeah, you name it. Uh, and and Mike likes to baw. Mike likes to say the word baw. And what he's currently bawing about on Facebook in the Found in the Runs podcast is he's annoyed by technology that lasts much longer than it should in post-apocalyptic movies and fiction. So is that an open – can anybody search for Found in the Ruins and ask to join it, or is that a completely closed group? How does it's that work? It's a closed group, but if you – you. You can find you can search for it and ask to join and you know. okay so it's not it's not super triple secret then no okay. no um, if you want to join just you know answer the question which is what's the weirdest post apoc movie you've ever watched mm-hmm. all right then those are some uh, great answers <laughs> yeah so uh and the other thing is if you already subscribe to the Save for Half podcast, then you get Found in the Ruins as a bonus because it, it releases on the same feed. So if you're wanting to subscribe to Found in the Ruins, subscribe to uh, the Save for Half podcast. Yeah. See both. what I did there? Yeah. 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 Make it easy. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So at 16 minutes in, let's get to our main topic. <laughs> yeah. This is Shane Plays. This is Shane Plays, baby. Uh, whereas, uh, where is it? We're so efficient. I amaze even myself. So Chris, um, go ahead. And this is kind of, uh, your, your rodeo, if you will, it's your list. You I'm driving made the this bus. episode happen. You made this episode happen. So, so tee us up here. Tee us well, up. You, you let me make this episode happen. Thank you. Yeah. You're driving the armored bus through the hordes right, of you are. Yeah. In honor of our, <laughs> yeah, we, are, yeah. Imagine if you will that we're on an armored bus driving. No, to no, the that's wasteland. a bad idea for a zombie movie. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> we're on an armored bus. Wow, uh, that okay. never goes wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in honor of our historian, we're going to go in chronological order. Ooh. So number right. one, of course, is Night of the Living Dead, nineteen sixty-eight. But I want to mention that a movie called Last Man on Earth came out in 1964, and uh, it was based on I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, and it starred Vincent Price, and those are two of my favorite people in the horror genre, and the movie (laughs) is boring. The movie was not fun, and I don't recommend it, but George Romero saw it in, in 1964, And he probably thought to himself, I could do that only better. And that is what he did with Night of the Living Dead in 1968. He pretty much created the modern zombie film and either created the survival horror film or created the first great version of the survival horror film. So did you guys like it? Night of the Living Uh, Dead. So let's pause. Let's pause there because there's a lot to unpack. Um, Okay. And some stuff I'll unpack. Don't you hate it? I can't believe I'm going to punch myself for saying there's a lot to unpack there. There's some cool stuff to talk about there. Um, So uh, first of all, some of these movies will camp out on a little bit. Some of them will have to zip through, uh, you know, just for time. Um, So there's two things here that are very important in zombies slash post-apocalyptic fiction and movies. And first of all, I have to point out, some of these movies, as I read through Chris's list, I was like, ah, these are zombie movie adjacent, not necessarily zombie movies, or their second cousin twice removed of a zombie movie, but they capture that same feel, right? Unending hordes of monsters that want to eat you or kill you, and they're hard to kill, and, uh, you know, it's survival horror. So, uh, and I've heard some people have a very liberal definition of a zombie movie like for me i don't consider 28 days later a zombie movie that's a plague infection movie but a lot of people consider it a zombie movie more power to them so um so the 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 definition is a little loose uh but for 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 for, uh 
for tone for the not tone for the purposes of today's discussion, zombie movies and zombie adjacent are are all good to go. So, do you agree with that, Mike? You feel good with that? Yeah. No, I think that's okay. fair. Okay. So, uh, Richard Matheson's crazies too, right? It does. I made a note about crazies. Uh, okay. I, 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 I listed that as, as one to, uh, to possibly mention, especially since we're talking about Romero, because a lot of times, even Romero is not making a zombie movie. He'll make a zombie movie like with crazies. <laughs> so That's all he's good at. Um, yeah. Well, what do you think so, of Night of the um, Living Dead? Well, let's talk about, first of all, we're going to get to Night of the Living Dead, which I love. <laughs> one of my favorite movies. Are we? <laughs> the original. Yeah, the same place. We can't get there immediately. We got People have to be grinding their teeth in frustration. Um, so I Am Legend by Richard Matheson is a very important story. Uh, it, and I want to go to it first because it came before Night of the Living Dead. Um so it's not only did Richard Matheson influence Stephen King, we were talking before the show started that when I read I Am Legend, I was like, OK, I can see that influence here. Uh, but I Am Legend is not only a great I would say it's a novella or a short novel uh, about a plague that leaves most of humanity and vampire like creatures. And then you got one guy hiding out in his house. Um, I think he meets a woman who's also not uh infected or whatever in the, in the original book, I think maybe it's just a dog. I can't remember. It's um, both. It, it's yeah, it's a woman both. that appear, apparently is uninfected. Same with the uninfected. Dog. Yeah. And then there's a twist. Um, so, um, and, and by the way, I have not seen, I am legend with Will Smith. Cause I don't want to see the, I heard the bad things. The scene with the dog is bad. So I, I have not watched Will Smith's I am legend. I just want to put that out there. Cause I don't think I can handle the dog part from what I've heard, uh, but I've sad. heard it's a good adaptation. I've heard it's a good adaptation. The zombies are sad too. It's the best one that's been put out so far. Yeah. Ooh. Well, maybe I'll watch a version where they edit out the dog scene. <laughs> and I'll just, they'll, they just put in a title card with a description of what happened. So, um, and normally gore and horrid things don't bother me, but when you mess with the dogs, Mike, tell us about the zombie dogs in your game. <laughs> no. <laughs> could you guys, I will just, not. could you guys, just, did you like Night of the Living Dead <laughs> like I did? <laughs> I <laughs> didn't say like, that. <laughs> it was the seminal movie of its time. I mean, it, it was. was Night of the Living Dead is probably one of, it's definitely one of, it's probably my favorite zombie movie by far. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies I can watch over and over and never get tired of it. There's a lot going on with that movie. I do think that it established the survival horror genre. I don't remember seeing another. And, and as far as like, like I Am Legend is survival horror, but there's a relentless sort of, constantly trying to fight off the hordes and night of the living dead. And then they all basically spoiler. If you haven't seen it, die at the end. Um, well, yeah, Neville Neville in the book. See, at least gets the daylight to relax. There's no relaxing. Right. In yeah. Night of the living dead. Right. One of the great things about night of the living dead is it lives up to its title. It starts just before sunset and it, you think you're going to survive. If they make it through the night, there's this feeling that they might, be rescued. There's right. There's the he, there's the, always hanging this hope, uh, which is of right. course doesn't work out very well. Yeah. So it was a very downbeat ending. Obviously, it, it's one of the first horror movies where nobody survives. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it established. I mean, there's a lot going on with it. One, the zombies are horrible. They're eating like people's intestines and stuff like that. And the lady like eats a cockroach and you know, the zombie in it. And it, so he's doing stuff that people probably haven't seen before. You know, the, the urban legends are is that people were leaving the theater or, you know, having what they used to call it, like, Oh, I've, I've got a fever and they would faint or, you know, I've, I've, I've got the, the, the vapors. Um, and yeah, so I don't know I how true read that a review is. Where apparently the, the uh, guidance ratings for movies weren't applied until the month after this came out. So yeah, you had so like was, little kids going in yeah, yeah. to watch this it horror was, uh, film. Oops. Yeah. yeah and the, the reviewer was saying like it was dead 
quiet. And there was a little girl in front of him that was just quietly crying for most of the movie. Well, yeah. I mean, this movie was it's bleak. Uh, not, <laughs> it's very bleak. I mean, this is one of those movies that, especially the first time you see it, not knowing what you're getting into. I, I'm not trying to be, it doesn't transcend entertainment and become art. I don't mean it like that. But it affects you on a deeper level than just usually watching a horror flick does, especially like a black and white, you know, from the 50s or the 60s. Um, right. Comparable works of the time. It just Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, you know, it, it, in, and for those people that don't know, is you got a group of people who don't know each other holed up in a farmhouse trying to survive the zombie horde. Uh and this was the first time we really saw these shuffling, uh, flesh-eating zombies that are basically the the norm today. Um, the walking corpse. The walking dead, right? The walking corpse. Before then, a zombie was a, a voodoo thing. It was like a, uh, I don't know, it was either a reanimated corpse or else it was somebody kind of put under hypnosis to do the bidding of like a voodoo doctor. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and so like Romero was even, he's like, these aren't zombies. These are ghouls, flesh eating ghouls, but the, the word zombie stuck, um, and, 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 and we're off to the races. Um, and I think they give a nod to that in the, in the walking dead TV series. Um, they never use the word zombie ever. They come up with any name, uh, walkers lame brains all these they never say zombie and i think maybe they're doing that is sort of a uh a, a, a wink to romero i could be wrong but um is that it, it's the zombie phone are there <laughs> sorry if I, shoot i should have it's mics <laughs> Are there, are there sorry, zombie hordes that. we need to take care of mike is that the uh, hotline it's it's, it's sp- zombie spam Go, zombie spam. Okay. Go into the yeah. basement. I think that's the best plan. What's that? Yeah, and they're going to yeah. the basement. It, well, it, so the irony in uh, Night of the Living Dead, and I think I was talking to Mike about this recently. Um, like for decades, Ben from Night of the Living Dead was my hero. Ben could do no wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, he shows up in the movie, saves Barbara, takes charge. Um, you know, has plans, uh, but as the last for 1968, that was saying, yeah, that was, and, and Romero says that, that, you know, the character wasn't written, uh, as, as a black person, but as many people point out, um, once they cast a black person, you at that time, especially a black person bossing white people around and slapping a white woman and all that. I'm sure that had, how could that not have social overtones in it? Right. So, right. Um, you think almost anyone would have slapped that woman, Barbara. Yeah. Well, not, Barbara yeah, needed Barbara it. Annoyed. Barbara was, she was catatonic. She had watched she was her. So annoying too. Yeah. She had watched <laughs> her brother. Cause Johnny, he fought that man. Uh, she had, <laughs> uh. she had, she, had, she was catatonic, man. Um, <laughs> but well, that was another thing that impressed me about the movie especially as a kid, her reaction seemed so real to me. You know, it's like, she just went catatonic. She's like, I cannot deal with what's happening. I um, guess, but the other women didn't go catatonic. Well, yeah, I don't know, but that was, you know, yeah. she was the first character to get attacked by the zombies. So I think we invested in her first, right? Cause Ben didn't that we show up. Saw, about yeah. 20, yeah. Ben didn't show up in about 20 minutes in the movie. So, but the last point I was going to, I'll just say Night of the Living Dead, I think is a, is, is, is really a perfect movie. And I don't call many movies perfect. There's no scene that I feel is wasted. Uh, and it, it's just, it's great. It's great storytelling. Um, one thing that is, as I've gotten older, I see now that uh, Ben wasn't perfect and the Cooper power play right. that he did. Yeah, Cooper was right. If they would have gone in the basement, if they would have survived. He was just power such a struggle. twerp about it. Yeah, no Cooper was just a him. big, yeah, he was just a big rancid jerk. Uh, <laughs> but but he was right. And if Ben would have been more open, but there was like, this is my domain up here. That's your domain down there. And I've, I've seen the flaws in Ben as I get older. So anyway, I'm done on. Well, Cooper's on wife didn't want to stay down there with him. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. 
I would rather be yeah. eaten by ghouls than have to be in the basement with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and his wife. Yeah. Well, it's like, I'll you know, take but my, a, my chances. Yeah. As a dad, like, I understand him wanting to hide out in the basement and protect his hurt girl. Like no, it was a, he I was get right, that actually, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, okay. so anyway, any other thoughts on, on the grand, the ding-dong daddy of zombie <laughs> movies and survival horror movies? Uh, it was the first, the and in that, it certainly deserves its place. Mm-hmm. It was. I well, would not it's... call it a perfect film, no. but it is a good film. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, it, as as we will get to later, you have thoughts on Savini's remake, um, but I, uh, but like I said, I want to get too much into that because you're right. that's so, your next upcoming film. podcast. So, uh, okay. The only other thing I wanted to say, you know, I always one more thing. That was the big joke in the <laughs> podcast seminar, right at North Texas. Oh, yes. yeah. I I love one of the best scenes in the movie. One of the best lines was completely ad libbed. The sheriff that they keep interviewing on TV and who shows up at the end was not an actor. He was like a local, I think he was really a sheriff or something like that. Like uh, Romero was roping all these people in. uh, And when he goes, yeah, they're, they're dead. They're all messed up when he's trying to, that was completely ad libbed. And I was like, wow, here's just some random dude spouting that out, you know? And that's one of my favorite. Yeah, they're dead. They're, they're all messed up. And I, I just love that line. And that was completely ad lib. So is a great line. Yeah. Dawn of the dead's on here. Okay. Anyway. All right. Move us forward, Chris. Okay. So not much happened in the sixties. Uh, there was a uh, movie called plague of the zombies, a hammer film, which I don't recommend unless you are a hammer completist like me. It's, it's a good okay. hammer movie, but it's a bad zombie movie. Um, I don't need to get well, into now, it. Now, it came out before Now You're Living Dead. So what kind of zombies were they? They were voodoo zombies. Okay. Like, voodoo like zombies. you were discussing. Oh. And they're mostly used as slaves, which was something I wasn't going to bring up. But the 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 old voodoo zombie mythos is also kind of a slavery sort, uh, sort of situation. Right. They're often found on plantations. Anyway, let's forget about those zombies. We want the science fiction mm-hmm. uh Flesh eating yeah, zombies. or the the supernatural, or yeah, and to me, one of the scary things about like a flesh eating reanimated corpse zombie is like I can understand a plague, or I can understand hypnosis, right, or brainwashing, but a dead thing coming back to life is scary on its own, right? Rotting dead thing, and then it wants mm-hmm. to eat you. That's terrifying. So, <laughs> um, you know. That yeah, I never scary. liked it when they tried to give a reason. Me neither. Yeah, I don't. I don't think reason? that's a good. There doesn't yeah, need I to be one. Know. It's scarier when you don't know. I, I'm kind of. I'm. I'm with you. I mean, every now and then they'll throw a reason out there, and okay, whatever. But I think it's scary. Where it's like, holy smokes, what's happened? Why, why? Or it doesn't matter. The the when you have a zombie apocalypse wave that's decimating the earth, by that point the reason probably doesn't matter anymore. Right. It really, I mean, is it a microbe from Venus? Does it matter? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, and I loved it in night of the living dead. They, they talk about that satellite coming down with it, with Venus, but they, they leave it vague. They don't even say for sure that that's what caused the zombie. And I think I've read that that was a red herring and that wasn't even yeah. the reason. Yeah. So because we uh, have anyway. to have a reason. We have to have a reason. All right. Next okay. on the list. Uh, 19, okay, 1972. We're making it to the 70s. Uh, I did, this is not a recommendation, but some of you might be interested. There's a series from Spain and Portugal. Uh, the first one is called Tombs of the Blind Dead. And oh, it is yeah. about, um, what are they called? The Templars who were executed and are uh, haunting this uh, these ruins. And uh, they smell you and hear you and they are basically skeletons in robes and they're kind of creepy and it it does have a, some good survival horror vibes but it's really slow to get going so uh and then there's a whole series of them and one in the series has like a rape scene with humans not with uh, ghouls okay anyway, i recommend if you're uh really into weird uh undead things maybe you play role-playing games 
Tombs of the Blind Dead. But, uh, but I'm not of the blind it as a zombie movie. Yeah, they don't try to eat you, though, right? They just kill you. I, it, it was unclear. They definitely want to kill you. Yeah. But they, yeah. And okay, I, I was never sure. I haven't actually watched them, so. Seems like you know more I, about it than I do. Oh, well. I, <laughs> I, so I've seen those referenced, and I think they have a couple of them on Shudder, you know, the, which is basically the horror Netflix service, basically. Not by Netflix, but they Netflix with horror movies on it. Um, and I, so a friend of mine was talking about Tombs of the Blind Dead, and I'm like, are they, are they metaphorically blind? No, he goes, no, they're literally blind. So, so they sniff there you out. A, huh? There was a podcast I used to listen to called Mail Order Zombies, and they reviewed all zo- sorts of different new and old zombie movies. And he did a series on those Tombs of the Blind Dead, which is how I know about them. Mm-hmm. One of yeah, them, they, they even have a, a a zombie horse. Yeah, they, one of them. They, right have, they have horses which move in slow motion, sort of. But um, yeah, kind of skeleton. Yeah, I love that, that stuff, man. Zombie horse. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I'm going to check out the Blind Dead series. Uh, I understand that you put content warnings in there, so let's let's do this. You know, we mentioned um, sensitive topics like you know slavery, voodoo, plantations, rape. Let's just assume that some of these movies are going to have content in them that are you know they're horror movies and they're also a product of their times. And I, and I think that we can say, hey, this movie had slaves in it without endorsing slavery, right? Like uh, there's kind yeah, of yeah, I a, think that's yeah. It's, yeah, you know, there's there's sort of a thought in modern discussion that like, oh, your your content can't even have slavery in it, even if the slaves, even if the slavers are the bad guys. And I, mean, I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I some of this watch, stuff. I can watch the movie Carrie and still not be a person that approves of high school. <laughs> yes. Very good. Or pranks. Yeah. Prank. Uh, yeah. yeah. Prank. Yeah. Pranks. High school pranks. OK. Good or proms. All right. Or proms. Yeah. All right. Are yeah, we ready no for 19? But I do appreciate. Yeah. yeah, go go on. Right. 1971 Chris. Omega Man is on my list. Ah. It's number two. Charlton Heston doing the I Am Legend thing with Rose, yeah. Rosalind Cash on a motorcycle and an afro and machine guns and cultists and albino. Yeah, the zombies are more beings. cultists, really. Yeah, they're, they're more not... plague survivors than vampire-like in this one. But it's right. it's Omega Man, so come on. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie. <laughs> it's yeah, fun. and so it's interesting that so within so they did Last Man on Earth in '64. Seven years later, they did basically the same movie, Omega Man, uh, with with Charlton Heston, where the original one had Vincent Price. Now, Omega Man gets referenced a lot, even by people who aren't into like zombie movies or whatever. Omega Man is just one of those movies that comes up in pop culture a lot. Uh, you know, it's got Heston and all this. Um, it It's not as faithful to the book, but, you know, it's not fun. Even. Yeah, it's fun and, and all that. The, you know, the, the cult, the evil bad guys, like I said, they're not uh, nighttime vampire creatures. They're like more like uh, plague survivalists or cultists like Michael pointed out. Um, but it, it hits some of the same thing. It's, you know, hits, uh, you got the last survivor who wasn't affected by the plague and a woman, right? Uh, and the movie starts with him wandering around, you know, going to the movies, wandering around the stores <laughs> and everything. So there's kind what of that. What would you do? Right. It's Go that, ahead. that, wish fulfillment sort of thing, yeah. you know, Leading. everything's yours. What would you do if you were the last person? Like, like, what would you do? I would do would it. Everything be like Chuck Burgess Meredith. And I was about to say, I could have more than one pair of glasses. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you be like Burgess Meredith in, in Twilight Zone and actually exult that everybody was gone and now you had time to read? Uh, would you, uh, would you no. go? But I would be able to catch up on some reading. I won't lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Let's let's just say it's it's a fantasy. So you're the last person on Earth. Electricity still works. You can drive just, around. You can get gas. Despite you can go to all logic, everything. Yeah, still despite works. all logic, you could do everything you want. There's just no people. And at night, ravening hordes of bad guys come after you. <laughs> What's the first thing you would do? Fortify the hell out of my house. That's the first <laughs> thing I would do. 
Okay, second thing. <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of frozen food, I think. Uh, and uh, lot, I'd go to Beth Marie's food. ice cream and just get behind the bar. And <laughs> yeah. I like how he gets a statue uh, and he puts a, his hat on it and he pretends to play chess with it. That's the kind of crazy stuff yeah. I like in an end of the yeah. world movie. Yeah. I would yep. Probably start to go a little crazy. Mm. Well, you have to have companionship like like the we're built. And I'm sure there's there's always exceptions. There's people out there like I don't. Okay, fair enough. Most people are, are we're kind of built for like when they did a castaway with Tom Hanks when he turns the volleyball into his little buddy Wilson. I really right. think well, that would happen. You've got to have balance. something to talk yeah. to. Yeah, humans are social yeah. animals. We right. we do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't remember. Was there a dog in Omega Man? No. No well, dog? He, he quickly he quickly meets some survivors who appear to have not succumbed to the uh, plague yet. So the, okay. the last man on Earth thing is is a kind of a minor theme, I think. Uh, Especially I mean, compared to the Vincent Price one, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the Vincent Price one was more faithful, like we said. But Omega right. Man has motorcycles, machine guns. It has a a fire missile throwing catapult. It has a cultist with a spear and uh, I mean, I'm in. Waka Chica. You know? It has a sex I'm scene. In. It has a, uh, it's, it's just an entertaining adventure. So they took Matheson and made an exploitation movie out of it. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, then. I'm in. Sign me up. Okay. Uh, okay. Omega Man 1971. That is the, so we're going through a lot of movies here on Chris's list, but to be clear, his number one movie is Night of the Living Dead. His number two movie is Omega Man. Uh, okay. even though we are discussing other movies. So move right. us on, Chris. Okay, 1972 Children Shouldn't Play with Dead Things. A movie with a great I'm not trailer. familiar with this one at all. I am not familiar well, with this I one at all. I tried to watch it. That sounds like uh, sounds like a good review, Mike. You could try to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's like it's... watching a BBC documentary without the voiceover. <laughs> well, my father and I Ooh. watched it in the theater, and Ooh. I was a like a preteen, and I was waiting for the zombies to come to life, and it doesn't <laughs> doesn't happen until the last did. half hour. It's mostly and it, it's not that impressive when they do. People it's, being annoying. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting if you're into uh, really low budget filmmaking and the history of like people making an uh, ego project because the director is also the star and he also used his theatrical troupe as his cast. So some of the, um, there's a lot of whining New Yorkers in it, complaining about this guy in his own movie, which is kind of funny. But uh, but yeah, the the zombies are actually good when they finally get out of their graves. When they finally happen. But yeah, you might want to fast forward for, through the first hour. Okay, the next movie I'm mentioning because I'm showing off that I know of a movie that didn't make it onto the Wikipedia list. Oh, and, and that movie's called Shanks, which I also my dad and I saw, and it is extremely weird and also slow and not worth seeing. But I've never, but you saw I've it. never, yeah, this is, never this heard is, of it. This is the way Chris it, reacts here. It starts. It's got Marcel Marceau in Marcel it. Marcel Marceau stars as a puppeteer and as a mad scientist. He plays two roles. As you he's, do. He's puppeteering dead bodies in it. And, uh, and there's a weird kind of romance and uh, some awkward stuff with a biker gang. Anyway, it's a bad movie. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, it's William Castle's last movie, so that's kind of sad too. But anyway, Shanks, extremely weird. Not recommending Never it. Never heard of it. Just showing off that I saw it. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we've got ourselves to 1978 and Dawn of the Dead. Well, hold on. I've got it. Since we're before we get to 1978, I did a real quick research. Uh, I wanted to mention the most annoying zombie movie I've ever seen. Oh. And and that's called the living dead at Manchester morgue. And that came out in 1974. Oh, so you, I don't know that one. Yeah. It's British. That's not why it's Wait bad. Wait a minute. Actually, uh, I'm sorry. I did not see children and see with that. It was living dead at Manchester morgue. I saw. Uh -huh. I did not. It's it's, I watched the whole thing and there's parts of it that I like. 
But there's something That's about the one the where it's like tone. pesticides or something. Yeah, they're doing this anti-pesticide thing and Okay, to be totally correct, the Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue doesn't involve anti-pesticide. It involves a new type of pesticide technology that is against pests. Uh, it's, 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 it's got some kind of van or something in it that emits like radio waves or, or something. Uh, and that that's very central to the plot. So there you go. There's like this, it just, there's something, it's a zombie movie. I mean, it's a legit zombie movie. I guess. But there's just something <laughs> I, about it. I felt that, like a zombie halfway through it. Yeah, though. it just, <laughs> it's, it is, I think it wins as the most annoying zombie movie I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, I'll, I'll, that's got my vote. Okay, yeah. that's it. We, the that's our next the other thing that, and it, like I said, it's probably, if you're a zombie movie fan, it's worth watching once. Um, just for the experience. Yeah, I'm just for the experience that. of it. Uh, but it's the other I don't thing, think Chris for some is buying reason, it. No. When you mentioned Shanks uh, with Mar my, my, Marcel Marceau, who's a mime, that's the first person you immediately think of with zombie movies. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, it's it made me mimes. think about when you're saying he was reanimating dead bodies, I saw, I can't even remember what the name of it was, but it was a, uh, it was an Asian zombie movie. And by that, and by that, I mean, it came from somewhere in Asia. I can't remember exactly where I'm not trying to generalize. I apologize. Uh, but they have these hopping zombies. They hop Chinese. Yeah. Chinese. And, and they have this thing in their lore called zombie wranglers. And these people will, will wrangle. The, I don't know if they fight them. I don't know if they're like Van Helsing, but somehow they know how to wrangle these hopping zombies. So yeah, they, anyway, they fight them with martial arts, of course, but they, you can also lure a Chinese hopping ghost with tofu. They, they can't eat, but they still are attracted to the smell of cooking tofu. Well, there so, you go. So that's because tofu to smells so yeah. delicious. That's um, something, say. <laughs> that's yeah. something I thought we and, all should know. <laughs> and, and a hey, of the nothing. Let's talk about a Dawn of the Dead. of nothing, just because I don't want to forget Please to mention let it, us probably, talk about Dawn of the Dead. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there, by goodness. But my favorite title <laughs> for a zombie movie, not my favorite movie by any means, was Chopper Chicks and Zombie Town, which I watched in yeah, the that, so Anyway. I, I did yeah. watch that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a great title, Chopper Chicks and Zombie, zombie Town. Town. All right, Dawn of the Dead. Tell us, Set us up for Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> okay, well... Uh, 1978, it came out. I saw it in a shopping mall with my friend Rob and the air conditioning wasn't working very well. It completely freaked me out. I'd never seen colored gore done so yeah. uh, so shockingly. And uh, it was uh, the first zombie movie to sort of be get legitimately good reviews because some people noticed that the irony in it, the metaphors in right. it, the excellent acting in it and that's sort of um, the style of his direction, which is sort of documentary like. And uh, he did some of that in Night of the Living Dead too. the use of improvisation and so forth. Very realistic, very uh, just uh, amazing film. What did you guys think? I loved Dawn of the Dead. Um, the only reason I ranked Night of the Living Dead higher is because it came first and I saw it first. And so I had that <laughs> impact on me, but I, they're almost co-equal to me. Um, it, it, amazing movie. Uh, it, it, the colored gore. Like when you see that, like, uh, I mean, I still remember clear as a bell, the feeling I had when the SWAT team kicked open the door and blew that dude's head apart with a shotgun at the beginning. I was like, what? I mean, it just, I, the, the reaction I had to that, uh, the story's great. You know, you got four people trapped in a mall. They, they, they fortify them all. And then it goes on to be, you know, an opinion piece on consumer consumerism, right? They're living this pointless life in a mall. Um, lots of great action. Uh, also bonus points for including a, and polka music. Uh, it's probably <laughs> the only zombie movie out there that has polka music. Uh, well, there's, so there's, as a... Sorry. The, the polka the music is among some of his subtle humor, which he, right. he doesn't have any humor in Night of the Living Dead. But there's a... There's, 
there's enough humor in Dawn of the Dead to keep you uh, to keep you. Uh, there's a pie fight interested. with zombies. Yes, there's a pie I mean, fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's... also he just he he makes fun of the zombies staggering around the mall and like falling into the fountain and yeah. You know, yeah. you got a Harry Krishna zombie. Um, yes. You know, it's it's just it's really a great movie. And then of course you have the motorcycle gang that attacks. You know, which is another great theme in zombie movies and post-apocalyptic literature and movies. It's usually other people that cause you the problems because they were somewhat settled. Yeah, the zombies are never your greatest threat in most zombie fiction or, or films. The da- the true danger is other people or yeah. the people you're stuck with. You could <laughs> right. even make that argument at night that your biggest problem was the people you were stuck with. Right. If they, they could have arguing. all trusted each other, they could have done a lot better. I think that is a very good point. But uh, Dawn of the Dead, that mm-hmm. was the first zombie movie my friend Doc Benny and I saw. We were 15 and we had rented it at the local mom and pop rental store and took it over and stayed up all night watching it. And that even in you know the early 80s, that creeped the heck out of us. <laughs> I mean, we were just totally messed up, yeah. and yet we loved it. You know, the yeah, whole concept yeah. behind it. <laughs> I understand completely. Yeah, yeah. the way the, the world ends, but not with the usual nuclear Armageddon right. or <clears throat> pandemic or whatever. It's these dead bodies killing and eating everybody, mm-hmm. which well, in and of itself should be able to be dealt with. Except people don't. They freak out. They attack each other. They, yeah, selfish and stupid. And this I saw before Night of the Living Dead. Mm. So th- that may be why this movie ranks higher with me. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, if I'd have seen it first, it it might. Um, mm-hmm. I actually my exposure to Night of the Living Dead was um, I, there was a used bookstore by where my grandmother worked. And sometimes I'd go into work with her and she would, you know, typical grandma, here's, here's some, you know, here's $5, go see a star Wars. She would hand me some money and send me over to the used bookstore. And I found the novelization of night of the living dead. And I read about half of it. Um, and so when I saw it pop up on TV, I couldn't, I felt like I hit the lottery. I actually get to see the movie of this book. They only got to read a half of, but even the book had that depressing, like, absolutely vital couldn't tear my eyes away from it but was totally depressed and horrified by it at the, at the same time so um but anyway I, I think dawn of the dead is just a spectacularly great movie uh i was actually just just it has a hopeful ending though which is one of the big differences it it they do they do fly which away. wasn't the original planned ending yeah the, well, uh, what they, was uh, the planned they, ending the planned ending Suicide. was yeah. Yeah, Peter con- went through with what you saw and uh Fran did the helicopter thing what the zombie did at the beginning of the movie. Ah. Uh, okay. And that's that's a great move. That's a great scene by the way when they're when they're fueling up yeah. the zombies like you the, they build up all that suspense. That was supposed to be like, premonit, you know, a premonition. Yeah. Uh it's supposed to be a kind of foreshadowing interesting yeah, foreshadowing uh, that's what i meant so um so that's interesting because because it was still vague enough like they got away but, but they had very little fuel yeah fuel they had no fuel to know. and and that so that was the thing when i saw dawn of the dead when they when they did the walking dead and i finally sat down and watched the walk i didn't get into the walking dead until several several seasons had already passed the reason I liked The Walking Dead was because I, for years, every time I would watch Dawn of the Dead, I'd be like, what happened next? What happened to these people? And and so I was glad to see long form entertainment that kind of played out the zombie the continuous apocalypse. continuous of that of yeah. group. Some live, some die, but they gr- the group continues on. Yeah. Right. And in fact, I tapped out of Walking Dead when it stopped being zombie survival horror and into tribal warfare, because that's no longer interesting to me. So um, anyway, all right, Dawn of the Dead, great movie. Um, (laughs) 
great, great movie. I, I was actually, I just flew to Philadelphia and they show the little, you know, the little plane on the readout, like where you're at. And we flew over Pittsburgh and right after Pittsburgh, we were flying right over Monroeville, which <laughs> where they filmed Dawn of the Dead. And I was probably the only person on the, the, the flight that was geeking that we were flying over Monroeville with the mall. <laughs> I've heard the mall closed now. Yeah. I've heard they, they yeah, I've they shut they down the mall. Now. Unfortunately, <laughs> they, they used little, to have a little Dawn of the mm-hmm. dead section to it. Yeah. Oh, George Romero. Yeah. Tribute. Sweet. So yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, Dawn of the dead, 1978. Um, okay. So one year later, uh, Lucio Fulci comes out with zombie two. <laughs> Which I'm not recommending, but I am acknowledging is w- worth a look if you. Uh, but it has a zombie fighting a shark. Yeah. I recommend this movie because yeah. <laughs> the zombie it's fighting a shark scene is amazing. So um, over the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a. Fi- I I like Zombie Two. Uh, it was released here as Zombie. Uh, I think because in Europe, Dawn of the Dead too. was released as Zombie. Yeah. Right. So, so this they was were, Fulci's sequel, which wasn't, but they played off. Well, of no, it, right? but yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, so there's a lot. I, I, unironic, I love this movie. Um, <laughs> That's okay, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great zombie movie. It's a great okay. 70s zombie movie. I mean, it's, it's nowhere near very as good over as the Dawn top. The Dead. It's super over the top. Yeah. Um, so you got zombie fighting a shark, which. And you got um, worms. Fulci loves his worms. He mm-hmm. loves the worms. So the thing with the, the zombie versus the shark, that that was actually a stunt man down there holding his breath. Well, I would um, hope so. And <laughs> and they had drugged the shark. Uh, so <laughs> this is true. Get, Go. You could yeah. not do that today. Yeah, they had Gita drugged would the shark up in arms. Yeah, they had drugged the shark. And so you can go read it. And that guy's down there holding his breath and, and wrestling with the shark. The, so there's a couple of uh, scenes. If you're a horror movie fan, there's one scene that you have to see in this movie, even if you don't watch anything else. And that's the eyeball scene. Uh, that is one of the most cringy, uh, uh, you know, talking about audience identification with a character. You've got to see the eyeball scene. Uh, and then the other thing that I don't know, they have to, yeah, come on, yeah, they have to. if you're a, if you're a horror movie fan, you've got to see this scene. Uh, uh, so He's bullying you know, I mean, us, Mike. <laughs> yeah, it, you've got to see it. And then the other thing is talking about the worms. So when He's the zombies lying. finally start, when, when the, in their, their zombies are like old, like dead conquistadors or something. I can't remember, but yeah. they come out of these incredibly shallow graves. Uh, they're like the gra- the graves are like half an inch of dirt and they come right. Ra- and there's a scene after scene of these slowly rising zombies with worms falling off of them and everything. So just the, the style of the movie is, is worth Could watching. Not pay me enough. I'm to gonna um, film. I'm gonna assert that this movie has the slowest zombies of any film. <laughs> they they do, they certainly take a long time to rise. They do. Okay. That's true. Now, yeah. I'm gonna move up to another movie very similar called Nightmare City, also from Italy, 1980 by uh, Umberto Lenzi, uh, and it is about a plane that lands in a Italian city and a bunch of uh, gun and knife wielding zombies run out of it. Uh, have you guys seen this? <laughs> no. no, I've never heard of this. I'm looking it up right now. Zombie terrorists. Yeah. Car- well, no, they're they're They've been radiated. They have radiation burns. Some of them uh, more than others. The, the makeup so they're is not dead. Good. They're just. No, they're just, they just have a bad attitude and they don't <laughs> talk. They grunt. Irradiated. Uh, According yeah. to Wikipedia, they're irradiated blood drinking ghouls. Yes. Oh, yeah. They need to drink blood. Um, yeah. But uh, not a vampire. No, because they they want to just mess you up and then drink a little bit of your blood and kind of move on. And so uh, they're so- they're they're old school vampires. They're not big shirt trying to get laid vampires. Oh yeah, no, they're not attractive at all. The women in the movie are <laughs> very attractive. They don't glitter. Well, if you're going to see an Italian horror film, you're probably going to see a lot of attractive women. And uh, this one, they all... And their eyeballs. 
Yeah, it, there's, it's a little bit misogynistic, I would say, uh, which you well, probably could say about Zombie 2 as well. Well, it's an Italian movie in the 80s. I mean, yeah, it's misogynistic. Uh, yeah. I, don't, gonna, I mean, you know. I'm going to yeah, risk offending. Uh, One of my favorite movies is on this list is from Italy, but I'm going to say generally Italian uh, horror movie. Uh, you're going to see a lot of attractive women treated poorly. Anyway, Nightmare yep. City is very funny, uh, unintentionally sometimes. Uh, and it's very fast moving. It won't bore you. And uh, it's a, uh, some people really love it. It's a guilty pleasure. Mm. I enjoyed okay. it. All right. so I'm not recommending. I'm not it. familiar. Yeah, I am not familiar with it. Um, yeah, me neither. Yeah, but I, I do. I mean, I, you know, I definitely, I, I consider Italian horror movies from the 80s their own genre, um, regardless <laughs> yeah. of the topic. So I'm, I would probably enjoy it on some level. Um, all right, move us on, Chris. Okay, 1981, The Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. <laughs> Sam Raimi and his pal Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Um, amazing. Rare exception where made. the sequel is way better than the original. <laughs> I agree that I like Evil Dead 2 better. I wouldn't say way better, but I do like I don't think it was necessary, but as long because it's a retelling in a lot of ways, it's not as much a sequel as it is they kind of retold the story. Uh, I guess with more with bigger stars and no, no, same, uh, no, not a big Bruce Campbell is not a big star. No, they reached that, well. No, no. some of the other people that they got, because uh, wasn't. No, they just had more okay. Money. Which one was Bridget Fonda in? Uh, she's in. Uh, she in Army of Darkness. The third one, yeah, yeah. You're okay, so she she's in the recap. She's in the recap scene <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the first in the in the in the in Army of Darkness. Well, so Evil Dead Two is basically telling the same story, but with. Uh, more budget, more, I guess. More and slapstick. More slapstick violence. Yeah. yeah. And a, a slight change to the uh, to the story. But so here's the thing. I actually... to be scary at, at times. And for those of us who are kind of jaded, uh, the the scary part of Evil Dead 1 didn't work that well for us because we're not, we're not going to be scared that easily. And also... I, the Evil stuff. Dead... Yeah, go ahead. Well, there's a creepy scene with a woman and a tree, which I didn't really like in Evil Dead 1. Uh, but, yeah. uh, and Evil Dead 2 has the chainsaw and his yeah. hand is possessed. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah the, uh, so he sort of becomes hand. Ash, the zombie killer in Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead yeah. 2 is when Ash, as we know him, really, yeah. uh, really, really comes around the, the kind of over the top chainsaw hand uh, wielding guy and then of course by army of darkness he's running around with his boomstick shopping smart <laughs> shopping s smart um so and then of course there was a series ash versus evil dead um mm -hmm. that was i don't i don't remember what service we're not going to talk like no yeah. more television chain no we're not allowed to talk television even it's adjacent well, okay. you've already so uh three times so never so <laughs> so here's the thing evil dead i would say this is probably the ones that i would most say is not a zombie movie but for purposes of this list okay cool it kind of falls under the umbrella this is demonic possession um and and massive gore and but it's survival horror it's definitely survival and horror. it involves dead bodies so and it involves dead bodies uh the uh, there the evil dead i think i saw evil dead even before I saw Return or Night of the Living Dead for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I remember distinctly watching it over at a friend's house across the street. And it traumatized me. You know, all the, <laughs> like the pencil in the ankle, the tree scene with the lady you're talking about, um, the, the light bulb filling up with blood, just all yeah. that crazy, awful, evil stuff. The oppressive <laughs> feeling of the entire movie. You know, the, the first movie has none of the I'll wink at you humor of some of the later stuff. No, they it's were trying like, to play it straight. The second yeah, one, they, they leaned into the splat yeah. stick, as it was called. <laughs> right. Uh, but it... it uh, Wait a sec. I, you were disturbed by a, a light bulb being filled with blood, but watching a woman's eyeball poked out with a piece fine. of wood. That's okay. No, I was disturbed by the eyeball. <laughs> I'm just saying it was a super effective scene. Ah. It's the same way like that. 
the same he way, wants like to with, share the pain. That's he right. wants us it's all. A, it's it yeah. made like I mean it's it's on like horror's greatest moments list and all that. It's like <laughs> so cringy. Uh, it's kind of like when you ran that game at uh, NTX with all these famous fan- fantasy characters, and one of them was Kugel the Clever. And I said, I want to be Kugel the Clever uh, mm-hmm. if I could play. And you were like, well, that disturbs me, Shane. And I was like, <laughs> well, it's not that I admire Kugel, but he's entertaining. <laughs> so it's not that I extol his virtues, but he's I know super you're entertaining. a good guy. It's okay. <laughs> You're so, a good guy. Uh, yeah, Evil Dead is. And we're on uh, your show, so we're contractually obligated to say, <laughs> yeah, to yeah. say that. All right. right. Uh, and, and of course, Evil Dead is where we got. There was a Necronomicon book previous to this in Lovecraft writings, but the, written by the mad monk Al Hazred or something, mad Arab Al Hazred or Abdul something like Al-Hazred, that. Al Hazred, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they, they owned the Necronomicon in this movie moving forward, the same way that Lucas owned the laser sword. So when you think of Necronomicon, now you think of the book from evil dead series. So, all right. What's your thoughts on it, Mike? It's a film. (laughs) Okay, then Uh, I liked it. I mean, I enjoyed it. It's, um, I agree. It's got a little different flavor than there's no shambling hordes. They're not trying to horrify you. They're just trying to murder you in creatively horrific ways because they're demons possessing dead dead bodies. But they possess all sorts. Skeletons, zombie corpses, hands that are cut off and running around by themselves, you know, all sorts of stuff. I love that. They literally, the deadites, I don't know when they started calling them deadites. I think it was the third movie. They the started. demons want to drag you to hell. They want to eat your soul. And yeah. that is, yeah, it's scary stuff. All they right. are evil dead. They <laughs> are. And that is number four on right. Chris's list. I am number recommending three is it. Dead. Even though it's right. not strictly a zombie movie, I'm recommending it. Yeah. All right. Now, this is a not a recommendation, but a mention uh, for Dan O'Bannon fans and for fans <laughs> of strange sort of uh, dead people uh movies <laughs> it's called dead and buried from 1981 oh. uh not directed is this the by beach Dan movie Dan. they're like in the beach town is that the yeah thing? yeah they're not they're actually okay. in mendocino um although they don't call it that but i've been to mendocino so uh i've seen the graveyard anyway so uh uh it's a it's a creepy movie it's a funny movie uh it has a uh disturbing sex scene at the beginning but uh if you're in, if you're, if you become a Dan O'Bannon fan, either through Alien or Return of the Living Dead, you're, uh, you should probably see everything he did because he didn't do that many things. Oh, he also wrote the script for um, uh, Total Recall. Anyway, uh, the the concept of the of the undead people is is interesting, and I don't want to give it away. But um, yeah, if you're not too creeped out about what I've said already. And you were uh, a Diane O'Bannon fan, or if you love seaside towns in Northern California, <laughs> dead and buried. Okay, the next one is a recommendation. Well, hold on, I want to. I gotta. I want to camp out on Dan O'Bannon for a second. Was he not also uh, in what was the John Carpenter movie where they're in space? Dark um, Star. Wasn't that Dan O'Bannon? Yeah, yeah, that was him. Yeah, I think he wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he wrote it, and he was in it too. He was the annoying crewmate. Um, yeah, he was always like filing reports and complaining and having to feed the alien. So he, has a, he uh, was a comic relief character, and he's he can be very funny when he's when he wants to be. As in uh, the next is he movie, the one that right? shot the beach ball alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. After it almost killed him when he was trying to feed it. So, and if yeah. I remember right, Dan O'Bannon was also deeply, deeply involved with J- Jodorowsky's Dune. Uh, yeah, they, I, if I remember right. So he's anyway, in that all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, 1985 Reanimator, Stuart Gordon, and written by Brian Yuzna, starring my pal Jeffrey Coombs and Barbara Crampton. It is a mad scientist movie, but it has a, about six zombies in it. So, um, based it on has, the Lovecraft story. Yeah, yeah. and it's super gory. And it has 
perhaps the most disturbing sex scene that uh, we will, uh, <laughs> maybe avoid talking about today. Anyway, what do you think of Reanimator? Uh, I mean, it's a it's one of those milestone movies in horror. People love it. Uh, it's, it's ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah, it's ahead of its time. Yeah, da da uh, Actually, I just saw Barbara, Barbara Crampton in a new movie that was based on Lovecraft. Uh, Joe Bob just covered it. And, mm-hmm. and and she still looked, I mean, she hardly looks like she's aged. So I wonder if Herbert, if Herbert West gave her a little <laughs> serum. But uh, yeah. no, it's a great movie. It's fun. Yeah. It's, it's scary. It's funny. It's well-written. Jeffrey Coombs or Combs nails it. He's perfect as Herbert West. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the cat where he's like reanimates the dead cat. He's like, how could you do that to my girlfriend? But um, cause Herbert West, he plays Herbert West as like the clueless mad scientist. You know, he's just like, all I want to do is work on science. And he, he's just clueless about societal norms. And, if I just do this one more time. Yeah. So <laughs> well, he also has a great, great, great sense of superiority over everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, he's the typical, I'm smarter than hurt. you. Yeah. No. Uh, right. I have to tell a little story. Uh, this is my, my uh, favorite brag story. Uh, in Hollywood, my wife and my friend Jeff and I went to see Reanimator the musical. And <laughs> we, we sat in the front row in this little theater, the little Steve Allen theater, and we got splattered with blood. And we, uh, we listened to, uh, people singing songs from reanimator and it was a really good show actually. I bet you and then as we were walking out, I saw Stuart Gordon and Brian Yesna sitting in the house, you know, oh, watching funny. the show. Cause it probably wasn't going to run very long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got to walk That's up funny. to him covered in fake blood and say, uh, you're a great director. I love your, I love everything you do. Uh, especially, uh, this, uh, this play I just saw. And from beyond, I said, make from beyond into a musical. <laughs> from beyond the musical, but it didn't. Exist. Which Ken Paré was in too, wasn't he? Uh, Jeffrey Coombs and Barbara Crampton were both in From Beyond. Yeah, I thought uh, Ken Paré was as well. Maybe, or am um, I thinking? I may be thinking of another film. Oh, right. Anyway, but, Reanimator, anyway. a very special movie for me. <laughs> Shall I All move right. on? So, uh, well, I do have to ask in the stage musical. Was mm-hmm. the serum glowing green? Did they figure out a way to make it glow green on no, stage? No, they, they, they did not have the technology to do much. The, the technology stages. was not. It, Reanimate is a great movie. I, I heartily re- and this is number five on your recommendation list. So it is it is a numbered movie for you. I yeah. recommend it and Bride of Reanimator as well. Um, there's quietness from Chris. So do I take it you don't <laughs> like Bride of Reanimator? <laughs> It's, 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 it was a disappointment, like most sequels. I thought that the makeup work for the actual bride they created was amazing. Mm. I thought that that prop or whatever you call it. um, And, and I, I mean, I just can't get enough of Jeffrey Combs as Herbert West. He just, it's like he was born for that, for that role. So (laughs) um, any thoughts on Bride of Reanimator, Mike, even though it's not on the list here? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but it's been so long ago. I honestly don't remember anything about it. All righty then. So that, I think that's what that says about <laughs> I have Which may be an answer so. right there. Yeah. 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 I have that there problem too. Sometimes. I don't remember hating it. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I thought that I, I just, it was entertaining, but that it's worth watching at least the scene where they, where the bride wakes up because it, they did such a spanking great job. On, it just looks amazing. And of course, it's an homage to Bride of Frankenstein. So, mm-hmm. um, okay, next is one of my favorites. Set us yeah, up. Yeah, mine too. 1985, Return of the Living Dead, written and directed <laughs> by Dan O'Bannon. You know, I can't, as many times as I've seen this movie, I'm sure, and read about this movie, I'm sure that I knew Dan O'Bannon did it, but it, it's completely, I'd forgotten that 100%. But I mean, I've spent a lot of time reading about and watching this movie. Um, love this movie. Uh, I put this really (laughs) what? Yeah. Send more paramedics. (laughs) Uh, So this movie, (laughs) this movie, so this movie hits on it's, it's funny. It's scary. 
It's a great story. It's another one of those movies that I would say it's pretty much perfect. No scene is wasted. Uh, it also was probably the most important movie for zombie lore since Night of the Living Dead in 1968 because it introduced new elements to zombie lore that just feel like they fit. You know, brains. when, when mm-hmm. yeah, brains. When you hear the with all the jokes or people talking about zombies going brains and that came directly from this movie before then like zombies didn't really talk or anything like that. Um, this movie had fast zombies. You had, uh, they, they kind of did away with the get it in the, in, in it hit it in the head and it kills it. Cause there's a scene. Oh, there's no where, way like, to kill these zombies. Yeah. There's yeah, no way to kill you chop them up. They keep coming. Yeah. Invulnerable. Yeah. There's no way they can win. You cremate them, and it just releases the yeah. gas. Yeah, yeah it makes more. Yeah, makes more. Yeah, it's. Uh, On the other hand, if they hurt. bite you, you don't become a zombie. But uh, they'll eat your brain. You do. So I don't. Oh uh, well, you know. That's what I mean. Yeah, you, know, you get bit by a zombie. This zombie, it doesn't mean you're an automatic death sentence. I mean, you know, if you're killed. You know, I never thought about that before. Yeah, if you're uh, killed that, yeah. and they don't eat your brain, <laughs> although they never make that clear, do you still <laughs> I, come you back know, even if I've, you have no brain? I've never thought about that because yeah. I would think I would think it, if it is a disease, uh, it and it, they eat some of your brain, the rest of your brain is going to grow back, and eventually, the disease is oh. going to take you over because the guy who gets no, exposed wait, but- to a chemical at the yeah, right, the beginning of the movie, the two well, guys. That's what I mean. You know, if skin. they bite your hand or something while you're fighting them, that's not you know. Oh, I'm going to die and become a zombie. No, they do no. answer this question now that I think about it because the red haired girl that's hanging out with the punk rock group or whatever, Trash, she gets attacked by, by zombies. Quigley. Yeah, and Quigley. then later in the and <laughs> later in the movie, she's running around as a zombie. Um, yeah. So I guess you My know, but I think they trauma. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, a great, we're... great movie all around. We should talk uh, about Linnea a little bit because <laughs> some people may not want their kids to see this movie, and other people, might yeah, not she's um, <laughs> just well assume known for when you need those uh, topless scenes. Yeah, yeah. She's, guys, she's let anybody you. listening to this podcast assume that any of these movies are not kid friendly. Let's just—it's not kid friendly on multiple levels, um, and a lot of these movies came from the '70s and '80s when. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure gratuitous. I would want a kid to watch any of the ones we've mentioned. Yeah, so <laughs> I Return saw of Living Dead as a kid, and I loved it. It was Whoa, perfect. But should well, you have? <laughs> yeah, you, you're a you're a terrible. I mean, don't terrible get me wrong. I was watching stuff awful. at 14 and 15 that I shouldn't have been watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, so. Yeah, this perfect movie, and I love how they tied it into the original Night of the Living Dead by saying that Night of the Living Dead was based on a real incident, uh, which led into the, the the events of this movie. Great humor, yeah. uh, great acting, um, great ending, uh, mm-hmm. banging soundtrack. Yeah, that's I absolutely right. love the, the soundtrack. Cramps. In fact. Uh, I was just looking up the soundtrack the other day. The Triox, the song is called Triox and something. But anyway, I can't, I can't rave about Return of the Living Dead enough, and mm-hmm. I can't complain about the sequel enough. The sequel is a huge letdown for me. It's grown on me a little bit over the years. It's grown on me a little bit over the years, but it was a huge letdown based on the first one. So, the only thing I would, I would quibble with is uh, at the point where they burn the body and create the acid rainstorm that brings the zombies back to life at that point i was like oh no one's gonna live through this movie <laughs> they, right they, these are smart yeah. zombies these are fast zombies these are unkillable zombies there's there's no way they're gonna yes yeah. there's no hope at you're doomed yeah they literally kill paramedics and then get on the radio and go send more <laughs> yeah sorry you know yeah. and and or yeah the and they actually and the stru- t- police car send yeah more send cops. More cops yeah and they do so they call this one the um, punk rock uh, zombie movie, and uh, it's it's got this nihilism to it that I think Dan O'Banion kind of uh, shows us in Alien too, which is he's very pessimistic about the government. He's very he really thinks people are corrupt, and he's very kind of angry and funny. A lot of like a lot of angry people. He's very funny about it. So 
yeah, it's a it's a Lighting definitely a great movie, a great eighties movie. Yeah, yeah, I love this movie. It's it's hard to describe how much I love it. And my only beef with the movie, I wish Suicide would have lasted longer. I thought he was a cool <laughs> character, and he went out like a he went out like a punk, not like a punk rocker, but like a punk. <laughs> um, and of course, we got Tar Man, who's a is a you know I don't throw around the word iconic a lot. I think it gets overused, but that's an iconic zombie, uh, almost as iconic, if not more, as the, the zombie at the beginning of Return of the Living Dead that tries to smash out the window with the the brick. Um, <laughs> so it's not at the Return of the Living Dead; it's at the beginning of Night of the Living Dead, where the cemetery zombie menaces Barbara, chases after her. Fairly quickly, a lot of people note that, that he's a fast-moving zombie compared to the rest of the zombies in the movie. And that he uses a rock. He uses a tool to try to smash the window open of the car. Um, that was uh, portrayed, or that zombie was portrayed by William Bill Heinzman, or S. William Bill Heinzman, if you want to be completely accurate. And fun note, I, I never knew this. I need to go watch this. I guess they did a... 30th anniversary, uh, John A. Russo, who was like the writer and heavily involved with the original Night of the Living Dead, uh, released a, a 1998 version uh, that had extra footage and I think re-edited it and added a different score. Uh, and they expanded on Cemetery Man's story and showed where he came from and, and all of that. So why he was shuffling around the uh, cemetery when Barbara and her brother Johnny were there. Johnny fought that man. Uh, also, I misspoke earlier. The sheriff, uh, Sheriff McClelland in Night of the Living Dead, was played by George Cosana, who was not a sheriff in real life. Uh, he was uh, an, actually an investor, one of the, I think, the original 10 investors in Night of the Living Dead, Image 10 films. Uh, and he was. He also worked in a steel mill, and uh, in Cl in Clareton, Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm getting this from Wikipedia. Uh, at, at the same time, he was also occasionally acting in, in in zombie movies. So, or movies, not just zombie movies. So, there you go. I'm back to the show. That's interesting that you liked um, you liked the punk rocker. I liked the. Uh Guy played by Mr. Karen, what's his name? Bob Karen. Anyway, he he was the middleman, the guy who showed the new kid. Yeah, um, no, great kid, great. Love that character. Yeah, yeah, because he's like um, this guy. He's really excited to show somebody to actually have someone he can show how to do the job. He's and he wants to do the right thing, and everything he does is totally wrong, and he screws everything up. But he's a he gets my sympathies. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's great. And in fact, him and Freddy, the character, the, the actor that played Freddy, mm -hmm. the reason they show up in the sequel is because one of the guys that financed the sequel was like, I want those guys back in it. And they're <laughs> like, but they're they're dead. <laughs> and so yeah. they just came up with new roles for them and put them in there. So, um, OK, number six on your list, Return of the Living Dead. Move us okay. forward, Chris. So this one is strongly unrecommended. And it came out the same year as Return of the Living Dead. And it was directed by a guy named George Romero. And I waited uh, in line to see it on opening night. I was so excited to see Day of the Dead and so horribly disappointed and sad. And I wanted to leave the theater. I hated that movie. What do you guys think? Day of the Dead. Take us away, Mike. <laughs> oh, what's this? A buck I've been passed. <laughs> I'll admit when I, the opening scene with the zombies in Miami, I liked that mm -hmm. with the helicopter in the background. My first my hope leaped into my chest going, <laughs> oh no, yes, it's Peter and Fran. It's Peter and Fran. <laughs> it wasn't Peter and Fran. No, not at all. And it just kind of went down from there. The effects were better. Yes, they were. Then Dawn or Return, or Dawn or Night. But the story just didn't hold together. I was not a fan of Bub. He was my um, favorite Bud character. Or Bud? Was it Bud or Bub? Bub. B-U-B. <laughs> Bub. Bub. I hated all those humans. 
Oh yeah, I was rooting for the zombies. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, it's like, I couldn't kill, wait for the zombies to get them, in and finish the movie. Them all. I mean, even the people you're supposed. I mean, I kind of like the female character, the doctor, but everybody else, you know, if they had died, it wouldn't have bugged me at all. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, oh, kill them all, kill them all, lamo. <laughs> no, already then. No. Uh, um, so we went. Yep. Go ahead. All I can say for it is I enjoyed it more than I did Land of the Dead. Oh. <laughs> ah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I actually so. liked Land of the Dead. Uh, out of all the Romero zombie movies, the yeah, only well, one I don't like is Survival of the Dead. That movie bores yeah, me. Yeah, that, that like, blew chunks. It's like, what were you doing, Romero? <laughs> that is my that was, least fa- yeah, happy it just was, Romero film. Do you want to tell don't... us? Sorry, sorry, Shane, do you want to say anything good about Day of the Dead? <laughs> It's not survival of the dead. <laughs> so I think Day of the Dead. I'm I'm in general a fan of Romero's zombie movies. Um, it's not my favorite by any means. I would put it in the middle. Um, it after Dawn of the Dead, it's a terrible disappointment because Dawn of the Dead just hit on every cylinder. But as a zombie movie and as a Romero movie, it's watchable. Uh, <laughs> the story just wasn't compelling. Like I said, you know, they, they're in an yeah, underground. Yeah, I mean, it didn't that, totally yeah. suck, but yeah. I, it's... You know, and you got the, like people said, the makeup was improved where like they, they ripped that one guy literally apart. Uh, they, uh, it just wasn't, was nice. it had moments, it had moments in it, uh, but it just wasn't the sequel or the next movie after Dawn of the Dead that I wanted. But like if, if I had to choose that or like, you know, uh, you know, for example, The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, I'm thrilled <laughs> to watch uh, Day of the Dead. So, uh, yeah, it's still yeah. it's still a good zombie movie to me. It's just not my favorite Romero zombie movie. Uh, it's good special effects. I love there's a couple of scenes that I think are great, like. The scientist, the the clueless scientist, thinks he's making a breakthrough. Frankenstein, yeah. yeah, yeah, by by manipulating the nerves of the dead soldiers, and the other people are like, "Are you crazy? If the army people see this, we're all dead," you know. Um, and so there's all that tension, which in some ways is good, and other ways is like, you know, I I, I don't I don't know it. it uh, I, I think the only two guys I liked were when they're like a couple of helicopter pirates pilots pirates helicopter pilots living out of an rv underground or something i think i like those guys um yeah the other two so, quote-unquote main characters they just annoyed me it, yeah a very annoying bunch of people yeah i think this was the movie where uh romero planted the seeds that he really developed in land of the dead that zombies could be more than just unthinking flesh eaters he kind of set that seed with bub uh, yes, and I don't like that. Di- I don't agree. like that direction. Yeah, I, I don't, don't like either. That but yeah, I will yeah. agree. That's where he started it from. <laughs> and he shouldn't have. And he shouldn't have. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cool. well, he's also, there's a book. Well, we can't talk about books. It's just movies. Anyway, <laughs> oh, we're going to move on before he starts talking about a book. No. Hmm. All right. Night of the Creeps comes on, up on a lot of people's uh, zombie movie <laughs> list. I love Night of the Creeps, but I don't really think of it as a zombie movie because yeah, it's, it's uh, aliens and uh, there's a a sort of a slasher a element B and there's movie. a uh, yeah it's a, a very romance. fun B movie kind of it is very fun. Your it's dates fun, are yeah. here. What's that scene? That where he's is. like, "Hey, ladies, your right. dates are here." Who's <laughs> the guy? He was in Halloween too. The guy with the mustache. Who is that? Good news um, is your dates are no, here. No, he's in Halloween too. Bad 3. news, yeah. they're dead. They're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Who's, it? Who's the guy from Halloween three? Not Halloween two. The guy with the mask, mustache. You know that, and we don't. I don't know. Well, he's he's, he's the same talking. guy that's like he's like thrill me. Um, <laughs> I think that's the same guy. I know what you're talking about. I just I have no yeah. idea who he is. Good news and bad news, girls. The good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. The actor in question is, of course, Tom Atkins, who was rocking probably the second best mustache in the 80s after Tom Selleck. Tom Atkins was in many movies, uh, probably best known to us horror fans for things like Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, Creep Show, The Fog... And of course, 
Night of the Creeps. Thrill me. Thrill me. Thrill me. Thrill me. Thrill me. Detective. Thrill me. <laughs> Night of the Creeps. I actually think Night of the Creeps feels more like a zombie movie than, like, for example, Evil Dead. It's just that the reason they're zombies is aren't there like alien worms in their brains yeah, or slugs. something like that? Passing over their slugs. brains. Yeah. yeah, but they but they're shuffling slugs. around and acting like zombies. And and yeah, yeah, the good news is their dates are here. The bad news is they're dead. And mm-hmm. I also give this movie credit because they said it in the fifties, right? So mm-hmm. um, so it's got that nice time period, you know kind of kind of feel that to it i enjoyed it yeah i don't know if i ever yeah yeah so it's, uh, it's it's a fun movie so <laughs> unlike uh, day of dead it's fun so we uh, <laughs> that is not a fun movie no day yeah. of dead is not fun yeah so my number seven was evil dead too but we already talked about that i think yeah Enough. mike and i it's our favorite yeah and then uh yeah. i'm gonna Jump ahead to 1990. Okay, we've left the 80s behind. Do you guys want to um, any 80s movies you want uh, to? Before I go, uh, I want to uh, mention that. Um, yeah, there was one movie that we mentioned briefly. I think it came out. Actually, it might have come out in the 70s or early 80s. Was the Crazies? Oh, I forget the Crazies. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's another Romero movie that's basically a zombie movie, but instead it's this um, infection that makes people homicidal and homicidally insane. Yeah, it's basically a zombie movie. The only difference is is they're not uh, reanimated dead people. Uh, They're fast and they're yeah have some brain. But they also act crazy, like uh, the ladies with a broom who is sweeping the grass, walking through the grass, you know, just stuff like that. But it opens on a man, just a see, really yeah, tremendous things like that all the time. And, you know, yeah. just driving around. Well, the these bus. days, <laughs> these days, um, where's, the science, where's the science fiction? Where's the horror? <laughs> so one of the great elements of the crazies that having been in the military and worked with the government um, and I include working in a school district in that (laughs) was the tremendous negative impact that the government bureaucracy had on the scientists who were trying to uh, find a cure for the disease. All the, all the just death by a thousand cuts bureaucracy to even make a phone call. Um, Yeah. Just all the and, and that rang so true. The other, the other uh, impressive part of the crazies to me, it's very sad, but it's a tremendously impactful scene. Is the very beginning of the movie is two little kids watching their dad go crazy and murder their mom and burn down the house, and that was just wow. I mean, I thought that was just such a crazy, you know, if you'll allow me uh, no a wordplay scene. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I think That's the crazies is worth watching mentioning. actually. <laughs> I started oh, to watch that? The crazy. I started to watch the crazies uh, on cable, and I yeah. turned it off after that scene. After that, so you never watched it all the way through? No, I, I yeah, because yeah. Romero has disappointed me so many times. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to feel worse <laughs> about life. <laughs> I'm gonna go you know, watch Godzilla Romero. Or something. Romero made a movie called like the amusement park or something like that for the Mormons. I haven't watched it yet, but people dug <laughs> it back up. It's like it's like a 45 minute movie for the Mormons called like the amusement park. And uh, I've been meaning to watch that. Um, Okay. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Where are we? 1990. Uh, Oh, 1990. Okay. So I have to caution here. Oh, this, this movie is the topic of an upcoming episode for found in the ruins podcast. I think is Chris going to be on that or is that is, is no, he's coming. He'll he'll be on for Dawn of the dead. Dawn of the Dead. Okay. So we don't want to go too deep on this just because I don't want to spoil all of all of Mike's. Uh, oh, you won't. Thing for the- yeah, you won't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we won't have time. But okay. the whole hour episode is just the two nights of the living dead. So we have plenty so, of time. So let me let me boil let me boil this down to you based on previous conversations. Mike, who in all other ways I respect tremendously, 
Uh-oh. for some reason feels that this one is superior to the 1968 one, which is, is the only, the only moment I found in life where, where uh, I look askance at, at Mike Stewart. Shane, that was clear, concise, and well presented <laughs> and wrong. Wait, what, what movie are we talking about here? Night of the Living Dead, 1990. Versus Night oh, of the Living Dead, I thought that Dead, was next on your list. Yeah, you're right. It is. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I skipped it because I didn't like it that much. It, I don't <laughs> hate it. I don't hate it at all. I think it's a great movie, but there's no way that I rank it up there with, with the original. I think it's, uh, it, it holds up better, I think, than the original. As much as I love the original, this is generally a better film. I, I just, I believe it. I'm sorry. My lear, my ears hear the vibrations that your vocal <laughs> is making, but my brain can't process what you're saying. I literally... Well, you know, you just can't handle the logic of it. I understand. <laughs> so. well, no, let me tell you what really happened. Mike admitted on Facebook the other day, or not admitted, but mentioned that his first date with his wife, <laughs> his now wife, oh. was the 1990... That had nothing to dead. do with it. So he's biased. He's biased. That had nothing yeah. to do with it. <laughs> it's a halo effect. <laughs> that was a purely no. co- happy coincidence. <laughs> so there's a lot of... And it is coincidentally... It's coincidentally, it's the first movie with a really strong female protagonist. Yes. Who's, well, they... they who I really like. I mean, Barbara is as different Palman. as she could be. I mean, come on. Yeah, she snaps mm-hmm. out of her catatonia in this one and actually survives. It it's uh, faithful enough to the original that when they do the very small twists, you're caught off guard, but not so much mm-hmm. that it really changes anything. It's a good movie. I just I can't rank it up there with the 1968 one. I went and saw this at the theater in 1990. I was at tech school in the Air Force. Uh, I'd left basic training. I was at tech tech school in Biloxi, Mississippi, Keesler Air Force Base. Well, there was your I, first problem. Yeah. I like Biloxi. <laughs> and I bet you didn't have a nice date. Either. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went with like three other sweaty, smelly guys to go see Did this. you ever go to Coast and, uh, Con? <laughs> yeah. What's that? Did you ever go to Coast Con? The gaming no, convention huh? There in no, I didn't wow. go to any gaming conventions That's the there. only good uh, to go to Blu- reason to go to Biloxi. Yeah. So. I like the Biloxi <laughs> Gulfport area. I mean, because ah. I, I was like eight, I was like 18 I was I was fresh out of basic training. I was having fun. Uh, didn't know any better. So, okay, I got you. Didn't know any better. You. When yeah. I was there back in Let's agree. in the nineties <laughs> or the or late eighties, early nineties, Biloxi did not like the Air Force Base. There were like bumper stickers that would say "Clean up the streets of Biloxi, hit an airman." But uh, this is we're halfway. <laughs> we're halfway through the list. <laughs> Chris, you can't Let's slow me down. Me. No, no, Chris. <laughs> Let's agree. No, so let's agree to disagree. No, I've got a, I got a 1990. I've got a. I got to say, uh, th- there was stuff I liked about it. Uh, you know, I thought it was a little bit too on the nose when she's like, "They're they're they're them," or "They're us and we're them." It's like, yeah, let the film make that point. Don't sit there and tell me that. George um, Romero beating you over the head with a message. Yeah. No way. And <laughs> but there were some great scenes like uh and I love that Tom Savini got snookered into directing this because George yeah, Romero was gonna S- direct after it. Romero wrote it. And then, yeah. Yeah, and then Savini shows up to help with the makeup and then he gets snookered into directing the whole thing. So uh I, I love that. And I love the scene where they're digging the old farmer, they're digging through his overalls for the keys, and they find a bunch of money. And they just toss the money like it doesn't mean anything. I that was such yeah. a great scene because it doesn't anymore. mean anything mm-hmm. anymore, right? Yeah. So right. anyway, moving on so that Chris can <laughs> smile again. <laughs> all right. Here's a fun movie yeah. <laughs> that hopefully we all can enjoy called Dead Alive. This movie by some guy named Peter Jackson. I love this movie so much. And yeah. uh it uh is the probably the only movie to rival Evil Dead or Evil Dead 2 for the amount of blood in it. And it has a nice romance in it. And it has a really, really gross uh, scene with someone's mom in it. Yep. And it has puppets. Yep. It's, uh, I love this what movie. What did you ask for? I rented yeah. this only book. I didn't know anything about it going in. I rented it. I think I watched it before Lord of the Rings ever. Like I knew Peter Jackson as Meet the Feebles and uh, this movie and Heavenly Creatures 
well before uh, mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings came out. But yeah, I was, this is probably the movie that made me a real big Peter Jackson fan. Um, it's best film. It's, it's definitely straight up a zombie movie. It's set in New Zealand. It's bonkers over the top uh, with the gore, mm-hmm. with the, the priest who's like, you know, I kick butt in the name of the Lord and he's doing Kung Fu action on the zombies. Um, yeah. yeah uh, the, the scene at dinner where the, um, the, the mom is turning the into a zombie and like her, her thing pus shoots into the, the, the priest <laughs> porridge or pudding or whatever. I, I love this movie. Yeah. And then the last 20 minutes is so ridiculously gory and bloody. It's, it's, it's just, I, I, I love this movie. I love everything about it. So, yeah. What about you, Mike? Mike? Never seen it. <gasps> you haven't nope. seen it? Oh, my gosh. Well, Shane just spoiled yeah, it for you. Yeah, it's literally got it's intestines running around. Like, intestines self-animate and, and run around. I've never been one of those worried about spoilers anyway, so. Yeah. Smiling intestines. Well, it's, yeah. uh, it, what the movie is really about at its core is an overbearing mother. Uh, <laughs> And it's surrounded by a zombie movie, but it is absolutely <laughs> ridiculously over the top. Uh, and it's got some great special effects in it. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's there's some and special a sweet little oh, love story. It's a love story. It's a sweet little love story story too. The, good, the acting is good. And there's some yeah. practical effects. I still don't know how they did them. They, there's a scene where this one zombie gets half of its head chopped off. So it's just like mm. the nose up. And the and the head is sliding around in the blood during the final battle. Oh yeah, and it's like looking yeah. around, like it'll slide and look around. And I'm still don't know how they did that because it looks so real. You know, it's like looking around. <laughs> and so anyway, all right, dead alive. Can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, uh, where are we? Oh, Army of Darkness is not recommended, but it is mentioned because it's not it's not a bad movie at all. I enjoyed it, but uh, it's more of a uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Medieval fantasy action. It's a dark comedy. Dark fantasy comedy, I would call it. It's not dark because it's Bruce Campbell and Tom Savini, but yeah. Damn, I'm afraid a dark I'm setting. Have to ask you to leave the store. Yeah. Shop <laughs> yes. smart. Shop. This is where Ash full on became Ash. The, yeah. the <laughs> caricature of himself that he was before, uh, where he's sort of a, a bit of a buffoon, uh, a bit of a chauvinist buffoon. Uh, but he's really good at fighting deadites. So uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at the end of evil dead two, he gets sent through a time portal uh, and he, you know, he ends up in, I don't know, medieval quasi medieval, quasi- whatever medieval yeah. Ren fair England. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's running around with a show. <laughs> he's in the deserts of California. <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, he's got his chainsaw hand and he's got his boomstick. Uh, this is such a quotable, car. such a quotable movie. This is the movie where Groovy came back into the vernacular. Um, yep. mm-hmm. So uh, you got Groovy. He's got so so many great. This is my boomstick. Listen up, you primitive screwheads. This is my boomstick. Um, first, you want to kill me. Now you want to kiss me. Blow. <laughs> Just so many. Great- <laughs> give me some sugar, baby. She's like, yeah, give me some sugar, baby. And after his his love interest Great turns quote. into a deadite. She's like, you used to like me. He's like, honey, you got real ugly. It's just, I love. And there's an evil version of, of course, yeah. there's the yes. windmill scene, which Eat is the, the closest thing to horror is probably the windmill scene uh, where evil uh, Ash sort of his, the antagonist arises. So, uh, so just great movie all around. So much fun. A lot of fun. All right, so this one's kind of a test because uh, people who love uh, these other movies we talked about, you are my people. But if you uh, if you love this next movie, you're my family. This is Cemetery Man from 1994 from Italy, starring Rupert Everett, and it's in English, but it's an Italian uh, zombie art film, and uh, it has a a fairly graphic sex scene and it has a lot of gore and it has uh, some parts of it that where you're not really sure what you're seeing is real or if someone's going insane. And uh, it has one of the weirdest, most confounding endings of any movie, but 
My wife and I love this movie, Cemetery Man. Anybody see it? No. I 100% <laughs> love this movie. I saw it back in, I don't know how I rented it or something hey. back in the day. Sorry, Mike, but you're not in the family. Yeah, oh, it, wow. uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of starting to make the rounds again. I'm seeing it uh, kind of show up on streaming now, so it's kind of getting a new following. Uh, it's, it's half serious, half comedy. It's a dark comedy. It's not like laugh out loud, but there's moments of humor in it. There's some very tragically ironic moments, especially include, you know, with him and his girlfriend. Um, and there is uh so here, here's the concept. <laughs> You're going to tell the concept. Here's right? the concept. So this, this guy, they call well. him in, they call him an engineer, but what he is, is he, he's the groundskeeper or whatever for a cemetery. And for some reason that's never explained at this cemetery that after the dead are buried, they rise back to life. So uh, after trying to report this to the authorities and the paperwork being too ridiculous, he figured it was easy just to kill the <laughs> zombies than to have to put up with the paperwork. So, uh, so during the day he takes care of the cemetery, uh, digs the graves, whatever. And at night he kills the zombies. Um, and there's some great dark humor in it. There's some great zombie action in it. Great storytelling. Um, like I said, it's kind of a dark comedy, but it's not outrageously laugh out loud funny. But yeah, I would definitely recommend this movie. Uh, there's some sexual aspects in it uh, that you mentioned. Uh, up to and you know, I'm not I'm not big on trigger warnings, but there is a scene where this one lady says that, and this is I'm you know I've got to give a trigger warning on this one where one of the female characters <laughs> yeah. says, "Oh, he raped me." And it made me realize how much I love him or something like that. And I was like, wow, you know, in the nineties, that was a pretty strong, uh, yeah. In the nineties, yeah. that was a pretty strong that. statement. Uh, you know, but today well, you said it was Italian, right? Yeah, it was Italian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot that. It happened. Yeah. There's a scene where, where one of the female characters says that. So, you know, even though I'm pretty easy going on stuff, I got to throw that one out there. Uh, but the movie itself, you know, the zombie action, all that stuff. And there's some, tragically ironic stuff with the love story so and it's beautiful uh the cemetery yeah. is beautiful and it's beautifully filmed. i agree yeah yeah anyway so it's a weird one all right speaking of weird we're going to go to hong kong 1998 bio zombie directed by wilson yip and uh there's a number of uh hong kong action horror movies but this is the most zombie-ish one and it takes place in a little mall <laughs> and uh, the main characters are criminals uh, who are in incompetent criminals and uh, a girl they like who works at the sushi place. And uh, it's just zombie craziness. And it's not uh, it it uh, it never pauses long enough for you to think about it. Really, it just moves Bio super zombie. fast. Lots of action. Pretty gross. Uh, I have not seen nothing. This. Nothing. I, I get the original is Sang Fa yeah. Sua Si, evidently, in the original. Anyway, <laughs> Chinese Bio Zombie. It's a lot of fun. Okay. And uh, they get caught. They get trapped inside the mall with the zombies in this movie. Somebody closes the uh, the gates, uh, so they're trapped inside this really uh, bright, shiny, um, bulletproof glass filled mall with the zombies, and they have to run around and try to. Uh, very Dawn Escape. of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, it's like the anti Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, it is fun. Bio Zombie. All right. Yeah, I have not heard of it. So this this today's episode is giving me plenty of zombie. Sounds <laughs> sounds more like Dawn of the Dead than Zack Snyder's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, my friend Jeff, I have to thank him for recommending a couple of these movies to me. Yeah. He has an entire movie um, room in his house full of VCR cassettes and DVDs. And he showed me his like zombie shelf uh, with three shelves of zombie are, movies. Are they full wow. of video nasties? Did they? Does this stuff like video <laughs> nasty list in England? He has yes, he has a lot of nasty video stuff nasties. and a lot of fun. That was what they called the list yes. in England in the eighties. It was called the video nasty list. The stuff that the mm -hmm. movies of concern. Movies of concern. Yeah, I, I find oh, yeah. it amazing that in America in the eighties we were obsessed about films with excessive nudity or sex in them. The British were obsessed with excessive gore and gore. disgustingness. Right. 
Yeah, stuff that <laughs> like, we were like, that's great. Yeah, it's it's interesting from the Yeah, more yeah. of that. Just don't show a breast. That yeah, the different terrible. cultural norms. <laughs> yeah. So Ed, yeah. since it came up real quick, uh is what is I have to say this because I love the Dawn of the Dead, Romero's Dawn of the Dead. I don't hate Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, but I see it as a, <laughs> I see it as an action movie, not a zombie movie. Right? It's more of like an action movie. It it, it if has it had none another of, title. I would have been completely happy with it. I'd have been totally fine with it. It has none of the commentary or subtext of it's of, zombies yeah. and there's them all. That's right. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but it's a good action movie. I agree. All right. I agree with you guys completely. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, so this is my, maybe my weirdest one, although maybe Shanks is the weirdest. Anyway, this one's uh, uh, very weird from Japan. It's called, Stacy, uh, subtitle Attack of the Schoolgirl Zombies, uh, by a guy named Tomomatsu. And the uh, premise is that teenage girls, when they reach a certain age, I think it's 15, <laughs> turn into zombies after going through a strange period where they're extremely uh, sort of fey and cute and they just sort of walk around being kind of spaced out and then they try to eat you and then you have to cut them up into 165 pieces and then they are picked up by uh, the zombie kill squad or whatever they're called who drive around Tokyo in a trash truck and uh, they dispose of the zombies. So it's a documentary. It's a, so comedy. It's a, it's a that documentary. sounds like a manga. That sounds like a lot of <laughs> yeah. manga of the time. It was a novel apparently. I believe it. Stacy. <laughs> I believe it. It has some Romero inside jokes and some Evil Dead inside joke. It's very funny and it's uh, you know it's a little creepy, uh, but uh, very weird. I've only seen it once because I don't have a uh, I don't have a VCR player, so oh, okay. I can't play my friend's copy of well, it. Well, how can you call yourself a an avid movie fan, Chris? You're banished from the show. <laughs> you don't have a VCR. You're off the show. <laughs> yeah, I actually keep cheap. meeting every time I go to Goodwill. I like lovingly look at the VCRs. I've got like two VCRs yeah. around here. Next to North Texas, I'll give you one. Yeah, I'll take it. Because yeah. uh, there is stuff... You, you well, know. no, I was going to give it to Chris, not to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm so, so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> that was my, all right, I'll give you each one. That's please. fine. All right, thanks. We've got... All right, we've probably all seen Shaun of the Dead. Never heard of it. <laughs> I think it's a legit movie. I don't think it's just a takeoff. Right. I mean, it is, it is, if, it if is Evil a Dead movie. Two is, I mean, surely Shaun of the Dead should count. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it, zombie apoc. It's it's a fun movie. I, I it it works better for me as a love letter to zombie movies than you know like a, a movie on its own. But there are some great parts it in has it. The polka. <laughs> the polka it's got the polka uh i love how that i my favorite scene in Shaun of the dead and and i would i i read somewhere that people are like they want to see the movie following this which i would watch is in the middle of the movie they run into another gang of people that are basically them there's like a there's like a Shaun, i think like a female version of Shaun. Oh, yeah. there's like a gender reverse yeah. Group that's exactly like them. Like, how you doing? Da, da, da. Except they, you get yeah. the impression they're more competent. Yeah, you, they're, so <laughs> yeah. I, I heard somebody say they did at least that. like like a thirty minute short film on them. Uh, there, there's a lot to like about Shaun of the Dead. It's it's I don't love it as much as a lot of people do, but I do like it, uh, and it's worth at least watching once if you're a zombie movie fan. Um, and you know, and I love that. You know the the girlfriend's always complaining that he only ever takes her out to the Winchester pub. Uh, and of course, at the end of the movie, they end up at, at the Winchester at pub. The Winchester. Yeah. So I, I love that. I mean, there's a lot of funny stuff. Simon Pegg's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's, you know, yeah. yeah. It's very clever. Yeah. So, yeah. And it also, it, you care enough about, even though it's a comedy, you care enough about him and his mom True. and his girlfriend and his buddy that you really want to, you know, stay with them to the end of the film. Yeah, it's so not one dimensional. That's why I think it's it's not just a comedy. It's yeah. a comedy with, with throwaway heart. characters. Yeah, right. And, you, and there's a little bit of suspense in it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm glad we all like it. Where am I? And just to be clear, um, if oh, you okay, haven't so this, seen it, it is a comedy. 
So yes. <laughs> Well, mo- oh, most of these are comedies, except for the George Romero films. <laughs> and the Fulgies. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I laugh at the Fulgies. Well, they're not intentionally That's an comedy. unintentional yeah, comedy. That way. I will never <laughs> right. laugh at a zombie fighting a shark. That is cinema greatness. <laughs> and I, I, I will not laugh at. Mm. <laughs> okay, so this one's a little obscure. It's called Dance of the Dead, uh, 2008, by a guy named Greg Bishop. And uh, it's a high school um, it's prom night, and the, the protagonist is in a garage band, and he does not have a date to the prom, which is good, because that's where the zombie infestation begins, at prom. And so it's him and his buddies in the rock band, and uh, it's got a lot of humor in it, and it was a low-budget movie, uh, you know, made by a guy who loved Dawn of the Dead, probably. And there's some D&D players in it who are not very effective zombie killers and they all get, (laughs) they all get eaten pretty quick. (laughs) But anyway, I, it's fun. It's called dance of the dead. Dance of the dead. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm pulling these up. I think I might have seen that. It's clicking some synapses. Yeah. The, um, the zombies like the rock band. They like their music. So they, they will stop. um, And listen, maybe we have to talk about a land of the dead now because the zombies, can sometimes be distracted by something. Yeah. Like the fireworks in uh, Land of the Dead. Dead. Yeah. In this, it's rock rock and roll music. If your band is good enough, the zombies will not eat you. But if you stop playing or if your music sucks, then they will then the they zombies will eat will you. Eat they will you. suck your brains. Uh which I like. Yeah. Uh we could we we may have time briefly at the end to talk about Land of the Dead, but you know we could that's just one of the oh, let's arrow, kick it down. Who cares? Yeah that's <laughs> well, I had like a. I was going to briefly touch on all the Romero movies that we didn't cover during normal discussion, but Land of the Dead, yeah, the the zombies, uh, they they shoot fireworks to distract them, but then a leader zombie emerges, and it, oh, yeah, we don't like him. Yeah, and is like, uh, you know, like, hey, stop looking at the fireworks, and you know, uh, he's yeah, like not, Big Daddy or something. Yeah, is his name, right? Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, so he's, you know, that that's that's that seed that was planted during Day of the Dead that, you know, the, the zombies, zombies learn to use guns. And, right. They're uh, becoming like their own race, like sentient race, rather than just blind, blindly trying to eat everybody and with no thoughts in their heads. Which is dumb. <laughs> to me, zombies are scary when it's just this big mass brainless horde. Uh, and when they're not like us, the more they become right. like us, the that's more they're just weird people. Right. That's not scary. Right. Um, I agree. Yeah. Um, although Fulci's daughter was in Land of the Dead. So, you know, you know who else yes, was in was, Land of uh, the Dead was Simon Pegg. Argento's daughter. Um, Simon Pegg and another guy from Dawn of the Dead have a cameo in Land of the Dead as zombies uh, because George Romero <laughs> oh, watched uh, Savini's zombie blade from Dawn of the Dead as the biker with the machetes. Yeah. He's there <laughs> as a zombie wandering in the background. In, La- in Land of the Dead? <laughs> uh, yeah, in Land of the Dead. So Romero saw okay, Shaun Okay, you guys have nerd cred. What's that? Yeah, Sha- Romero saw Shaun of the Dead and liked it and invited uh Simon Pegg and somebody else I can't remember to come be zombies uh, in a cameo. So anyway, moving on. Oh, Mark Frost, probably. Probably. Okay. Um, going to Norway, 2009 for Dead Snow. Uh, we got Nazi zombies in the snow. And, of course, some very attractive Norwegian actors getting eaten by them. Did you guys yeah. see Dead Snow? No, but I keep wanting to. I keep seeing it pop up. and I keep Yeah, I've heard of it. it. And it's fun. It's uh, it's a little bit scary at the beginning and it's funny. And uh, no, it's good. I liked it. Zombie Nazis. A, some, it's kind of hard to go wrong. Yeah. yeah. You feel doubly <laughs> There's some stuff in it where like somebody's intestines get pulled out for like uh, several feet and they don't notice right away. So it's kind of a. Sort of a <laughs> As you a do. Bugs, Bugs Bunny kind of moments <laughs> in it. Yoinks. Yeah. Yeah, it's like like one where the nerd gets seduced by the the hot Norwegian girl in the in the bathroom or something or in the outhouse. And like there is an outhouse. Yeah, like it's oh a, yeah, that happens. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Uh, 
how little of the sexy stuff in movies I remember now. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, maybe there's sex in it. I don't remember. I don't remember that. <laughs> but I remember the intestines. But I remember the I, intestines. That's the important I love thing. a good intestine scene. But I mean, zombie Nazis are great because you feel doubly good about punching them in the jaw. <laughs> Yep, or blowing their heads off, or, <laughs> or something. blowing their heads they're off. They're not only zombies; they're not only Nazis; they're mm. zombie Nazis. So. Yes. <laughs> All right. Then. Uh, okay. I do plan. Well, on we're going to get to the end. Of it. Yeah, you should. Uh, so this is another slight recommendation: um, Boy Scouts Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. It is on my list. I have not watched it yet, but I've heard good it's things fun. about it. It's fun. It's got some intestine humor as well. <laughs> Not to mention, isn't that the one where zombie... they're like teamed up with a hooker to to? Yeah, yeah, it's hookers the and apocalypse. boy scouts. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe they're strippers. I'm not sure. Something. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's funny and it uh, uh, it's well done. I liked it. Boy Scouts Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Okay. Okay. So uh, I just have to. I did. I didn't like this movie oh. that much. Um, Oh, okay. I think it's worth a watch once, uh, but it, I don't know. I just, that's what I'd say about most movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you're a zombie aficionado, but I just, I kind of went away from it saying, you know, I, I just was kind of let down by it. Um, you know, for, for brevity, I won't go into, you know, all kinds of details, but I kind of felt like, you know, we're saying, Oh, um, Sean of the dead, you know, you cared about the characters and it wasn't just a one trick pony. I kind of felt like, Scout's Guide to the Apoc- Zombie Apocalypse was a one-trick pony. Uh, it was it was kind mm. of comedy first, and you really didn't care about the characters. That was my takeaway. Worth watching once. Some fun zombie action in it, and there's a scene with uh, nether regions on a zombie that um, I'll just say I've never seen done in any other movie. Let's leave that <laughs> yeah, there. Just, yeah, yeah. There's some sympathetic pain <laughs> happening in yeah. that mm, scene. Yeah, you're like, oh, two men. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if that's your, if that's what you're into, <laughs> <laughs> go for that one. Next movie. Next movie, 2017 from Japan, One Cut of the Dead, the or also known as Zombie One Cut, a uh, low budget movie uh, in which uh, the premise is you're watching a zombie movie done without any cuts in the in the and the handheld camera is following the um the action but then it gets really interesting and i don't want to give it away okay Uh, i'll just say if you if you give away uh the surprise or whatever it 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 really takes away a lot of the energy of the movie um but it's a movie for people who love movies i think right yeah, it's a good movie. It's uh, there's a lot of. The only thing I'll say, and it's not really a spoiler, is during the first portion of the movie, there's a lot of what the heck, uh, but it's explained later. <laughs> uh, be like, what? Yeah. What was that? Yeah, but it's explained later. So, um, so it's yeah, it's good. Uh, now I'm, I, I, you probably jumped over it for uh, time reasons, but your number twelve was. Wormwood. Did you not want to mention? Oh that yeah, one? no. I just spaced out. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to recommend Wormwood, uh, especially to Mike because it's uh, it's from Australia and it has a kind of a road warrior vibe. Oh. Yeah, Wormwood is Wormwood is a very fun movie and it has a a good strong female protagonist and it has some road warrior vibes and uh, it has uh, you do you do care about the characters and it's got gore and uh, it's funny. Yeah. Okay. Wormwood spelled W Y R M W O O D. Okay. Um, I'll look from at Australia. That. I'll, uh, <laughs> you know, that's actually a really good subgenre that is just ripe for exploitation is Mad Max zombies. Because it's all compelling. <laughs> the Mad Max wasteland and the cool cars and zombies. That's that should happen. So yeah. uh, <laughs> it's all so it's like Wormwood. Land of the Dead could have done that, but didn't. It didn't. Ro- and it's <laughs> also good. known as Road of the Dead, Wormwood Road of the Dead. That's your number 12. And number 13 was yeah, One right. Cut of the Dead, also known as Zombie One Cut. That's Yeah, it's Japanese. I think it's subtitled Japanese. I don't know if it's dubbed or not. I can't remember. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah, no, it's subtitled. All right, uh, back to Australia for Little Monsters, 2019 um, 
by a guy, guy named Abe Forsyth, starring an uh, actress named Lupita Nyong'o, who I think was in, um, uh, she was in a good horror movie, I can't remember the name of, um, maybe it was called Us or something. Anyway, uh, so this is about a, uh, a gal taking a uh, tour of children to a, um, like a farm or something. A, a petting zoo kind of it, a farm and that's where the zombie apocalypse happens <laughs> and she has to uh, keep the children alive and not freaking out and she has a kind of obnoxious uh, guy who has a crush on her helping her and a an american uh, children's show host who's just super annoying and uh, he it's a comedy <laughs> okay but it's a comedy with uh, with some suspense because you're not you know these people are, there's three of them and none of them are really very good at fighting zombies. So, and yeah, you made a note long. here that this is heartwarming. Yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> it's your number 14 on there's, your list. Uh, of course, I think dead, I think dead alive is heartwarming too. So. You no, know, it is. It I has heartwarming was, moments. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the core of it is, you know, the love story. and the It has and heart. Everything. It's right there on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, the, the actress is Lupita. Nyong'o, uh, she was in Us. She was in both Black Panther movies. Oh, us, yeah. uh, she's currently in A Quiet Place Day One. So, um, yeah, I, I'll check this one out. It sounds good. So, yeah, yeah, it is good. Yeah, and then I'm on, we're on my last one from France. The Night Eats the World, 2019. You actually know, revised. This is back to. The- is this? Did you not revise your list to include this one? Am I? This is the revised list, okay. yeah. So this actually, this movie is a lot like um, Last Man on Earth. There's a zombie apocalypse, and this guy is alone uh, for um, most of the movie, if not all the movie. It depends on if he makes friends with a zombie, sort of. But um, it's uh, it's very bleak and very realistic, and uh, very uh, um, you know, it's French. It's it's well done. But it's not. It's not going to be full of yucks like the other movies we've been talking about. But, oh. Yeah, it looks. Pretty but uh, good. it's it scared me a couple of times, partially because I watched it alone. Uh, but it has some moments that are scary. I think. Uh, so if that if you're intrigued by that at all, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Night yeah, I'm going to try to check out all these recommendations. So, um, anything I haven't seen. So that looks pretty good. I'm checking it out. Um, I'm going to throw out a couple of made it. honorable mention movies here that I think are just worth mentioning in 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 the um, in the world of zombie movies. I'll let Mike do the same. Or actually, did you have any thoughts on Night Eats the World, Mike? Before I get into this, no, I haven't seen it. I haven't, I haven't either. I like the name of it though. Uh, yeah. So it's a couple. Very one, French. Yep, it sounds very it French. Is. Yeah. Uh, very French. There's a zombie movie that. I think it came out of Korea a couple of years ago. It made a huge impact. A lot of people really liked it. I found it to be kind of just an average zombie movie, but people really seem to like it. It's called Train to Busan. And I think it got an animated. Heard good things movie. about that. Yeah, it's good. But I mean, as zombie movies go, it felt average, but it was good. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're hungry for some zombie action, uh, I liked, I really liked World War Z. Uh, that came out several years ago. Mm. But see, I see, I've heard that's pretty terrible. It's a, <laughs> let me, so I have to qualify this. It's a good action movie. It's a great action movie. I don't see it as a good okay. zombie movie. What I like about the zombies in that though, is uh, they, they turn into zombies immediately. So you get bit within 10 seconds, you're a zombie, which adds to the, like if a, a zombie runs into the crowd and bites somebody, Within like a couple of minutes, you have a zombie horde, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. And also when the zombies come at you, they come at you like a wave, almost like a wave of water. And they'll work together like Mm. ants to come over a wall and stuff. But again, better action movie than zombie movie. Uh, The novel, sorry to mention a book, uh, by... (laughs) <laughs> by Max Brooks, who is Mel Brooks' son, is excellent. It's it's a completely Way different. Better. It's yeah. it's the 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 only thing the same is the name, World War Z. The book is a series of interviews with survivors of the zombie war, and it's very good. I recommend mm-hmm. it. Um, so I'll make a deal with you. What? 
I'll, I'll read that book. Okay. But I hate, I hate computer generated monsters yeah. that are supposed to be human. So when you take a zombie and you make him into a CGI thing that can move faster than a human, yeah. that can move like a horde of ants, you're taking away all the humanity from uh, the zombie. And, and then to me, it's not scary anymore. It's a special effect. I was impressed by the special effect, but I was not at all. I didn't think I was watching a zombie movie. Like that's it was a, yeah. That's my point. It's a, it's a good action yes. movie. It's not a good zombie movie. That's kind of how yeah, I. Yeah, it's an okay. Yeah, it's well. I, also, the hero the hero globe trots throughout the movie, and it's a movie about trying to figure out. It's more like a, an apocalyptic science fiction movie trying to figure out right patience the zero. answer. So it's not a survival horror movie. So you're not you're not trapped. With a horde of zombies, which is what what I love about zombie movies. All good points. Yeah, being trapped and being worried about being eaten or infected or whatever. All good points, which is why I don't I don't rank it as a okay. zombie movie. <laughs> uh, but and they had a they have an interesting thing in there where one of the few countries that is doing well in the zombie horde uh, is Israel because uh, yeah. they started they started uh, and this isn't political or anything. It's just how you know this has nothing to do with politi- Israel being a great country or a bad country just in the movie uh they started intercepting transmissions from nearby countries and everybody else all the other countries thought zombie was a code word and Israel went wait a minute mm-hmm. let's just call me crazy <laughs> what if zombie really means zombie and let's prepare that way and and by doing that uh they they at least for a while, hold out. Uh, so I thought that was that was kind of interesting. Another zombie adjacent movie I think is worth mentioning. It had doesn't have a zombie in it, but it's survival horror and the bad guys act like zombies is the original assault on Precinct 13 from John Carpenter. There's been many people wow. make the point that this is like watching a zombie movie because the gang members are attacking Precinct 13. They're silent. They never talk. They come on like zombies. So I've had a lot of people point out, and I agree that Assault on Precinct 13 is kind of like a zombie movie without being a zombie movie. Another recent movie I saw that was pretty good. It wasn't Japanese. It wasn't, it might have been Thai. It was called The Sickness. So the name of the movie isn't The Sickness, but rather The Sadness. It's a 2021 horror movie out of Taiwan. Uh, it's sort of a pandemic slash plague movie that has a lot of zombie elements. Uh, and there's just some crazy stuff that happens in it. Uh, and something that would make Chris happy is uh, at its core, there's there's a love story amidst all the carnage. And, and, and that is a zombie movie in the same way that like 28 Days Later is a zombie movie. It's, it's you know, an, like a rabies-like infection. Uh, and then honorable mention, honorable mention, <laughs> Michael Jackson's thriller video. <laughs> That's got great, yeah. great zombie effects. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, you know, you got, you got when they're coming, when they're bursting out of the graves is just as good as any other zombie movie. Out there. The zombie Especially makeup. At the time. Yeah. The zombie makeup looks great. <laughs> yeah. Good makeup. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And then I'm Maybe surprised. Not. Honorable mention. I'm surprised that nobody brought up either of the zombie land movies. I was going to you go ahead. Okay. Bring them up. Bring them up. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. It's all <laughs> yeah, you. I'm like it. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> One more thing. Yep. It's one all more thing? you, Mike. It's all you, Mike. Yeah, you get the it, one Mike. more thing. Uh, like all right. Well, I was going <laughs> to say one straight movie and one funny movie. I'll start with zombie land. Um, I enjoyed it the way I enjoyed Shaun of the Dead, as much for the humor of it. It's not one that I really have a urge to watch repeatedly, though. But I do like how it makes fun of a lot of the tropes of the zombie, um, of the zombie genre and the various, you know, thing X plays with our expectations. I think it's funny. I also like the various rules. Yeah, the, the first up. 10 minutes are hilarious. Yeah. I love those uh, first The first 10 to go were the fatties. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Ah. 
you know, and of course it, it had that beautiful uh, uh, Bill Murray cameo scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was doubly yeah, funny. A good moment. Which was doubly funny because uh, uh, Woody Harrelson's character keeps wanting to find a Twinkie and all he can find is the snowballs. And then, of course, yeah. there's a huge Twinkie <laughs> yeah. in Ghostbusters and they watch Ghostbusters in the movie. So, and Bill funny. Murray's pretending to be a zombie, so the zombies will leave him alone. Um, yeah. Zombieland yeah. 2 yeah. was kind of a letdown. I actually only watched it recently. It was okay. But it wasn't. I never as, watched it. It wasn't anywhere near as I good just, as the yeah. first one. All right. What was your other it's movie, there, Mike? It was a Spanish film, though I think they did an English version that I have not seen, but I've heard it was not as good called Wreck. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see that. Um, it's very kind of Blair Witch in that it starts with this, you know, local news channel going into, there was like some murders going on at this apartment complex and they end up getting trapped there because it's a zombie apocalypse and they're running around and the cameras running, you know, it's all this, the local news camera doing most of the footage and everything. So that was really good. Um, now are you talking like about I said, the they did an English version? version. Are you talking about the Spanish version? Yeah, you want the, the American Spanish version. Yeah, I'm talking about okay. the Spanish, the original okay. Spanish version. Uh, yeah. they did an English version that was all right, but I've heard it was not quite as good as the original. I haven't seen it. It was okay. I watched Joy them both because I'm a big found footage movie nerd and Rex okay. is a Rex, Rex a found. <laughs> and you like to watch movie. remakes. Yeah, Rex a found <laughs> footage movie. Found footage movie. It's a good movie. I liked it. Um yeah, it's, okay. it's basically they're trapped in a skyscraper and the authorities won't let them out uh, because, you know, quarantine. So not only yeah. are there zombies, right? Like there's literally a scene where I think it's some teenagers or something are on the roof. Uh, mm. and I, I may be misremembering this, but th- there's a scene where people try to get out and the authorities basically shoot them. Um so you've got the survival yeah. horror and all that. Yeah, it's it's good. I'd, I'd give Rec a thumbs up. So and it's R E C. Like actually, hit record. Yeah, yeah R E C. Yeah. I was gonna watch it. I was gonna watch it for this list, but I'm too cheap. I, I could watch all these other movies for free, or my friend Jeff could loan them to me. But that was like the one movie he didn't have a copy of. So I'm like, right. oh, maybe I'll get around to it when I want to spend money on something. Yeah, I never. <laughs> and if we're gonna, I forgot. If we're gonna throw Evil Dead out there. Then uh, demons one and two, uh, oh, those the good. Italian yeah. movies. It's zombie like, even though they're demons. One of them, they're in a skyscraper. Another one, they're in a movie theater. So um, anyway, all right, I'm gonna wrap us up. Well, any any other thoughts? Well, one last thing. Yeah, go since ahead. you brought up at, since you brought up uh, assault on precinct thirteen, would either one of you consider Day of the Triffids mm. a zombie mm. survival horror? Mm. <laughs> Obviously well, not zombie, but survival no, horror. I would consider so survival horror. So you would say horror. it was the first survival horror movie? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I would consider it survival day. horror. Yeah. I would consider it survival yeah. horror. I would not. I don't think I'd think of it as a zombie but movie. But you still have the horde effect, you know, yeah. the try yeah. to avoid them. The mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, Great I, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, some people say Attack of the Killer Shrews was the first survival horror. No, I never not a great that. movie. <laughs> I mean, not if you recommended. Wanna... The Misty version was great. <laughs> the Mystery Science. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. The Mystery Science version, Theater 3000 version of Attack of the Shrews was. I have never <laughs> yeah. seen Attack of the Shrews. I need to check it out. Uh, um, you're not missing a lot. <laughs> not missing a lot. Well, sometimes I love movies. If you like, like spray painted dogs, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a great, great film. It's got Roscoe P. Coltrane from. Duke do, 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 do. them Duke boys. Uh, come on, Flash. We were going to talk about that. Come on, Flash. Oh, wait, I brought it up. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, if you want to argue about Day of the Trippage, you could also talk about, uh, I mean, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, this slow cord mm. surrounding you and you can't get away. So anyway, all right. Uh, so just for the interest of time, we're a little over two hours. I mean, I could keep going. It's been a great discussion. Um uh, I want to remind everybody to check out the Found in the Ruins podcast. Uh, you subscribe to Save for Half, and you'll get Found in the Ruins included with it. Their next episode is going to be a comparison of the 1968 
uh, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Uh, Night of the Living Dead to the 1990 Night of the Living Dead, uh, where uh, Barbara turns into uh, Rambo and and Ben turns into a zombie. Comes Ripley halfway yeah. through. So uh, and the, and she points. She looks at the camera and says, "They're them, or they're us, and we're them." Uh, thank you, Barbara. I hadn't figured that out. Uh, Oh, I also was talking about Dawn <laughs> of the Dead. You are not going to let that go, are you? <laughs> <laughs> He's actually going to write in after listening to the episode. Yeah. Dawn, like so speaking of Dawn of the Dead, another the original Dawn of the Dead. I love the scene where they're flying, looking for a place to land, and the and the Hicks are down there doing target practice with. And I can say Hicks because I'm from Arkansas. They're down there doing uh, target. <laughs> they're, they're down there doing target practice, and they're enjoying themselves. They're like, I got that Shooting one. Shooting up the zombies. Get that third one on the right. Got him. So, yeah, they're, having, yeah, they're like practically him. having yeah, a cookout. Missed. Yeah, I love that scene. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, what I did, because I usually do the bad joke of the week, even though this isn't a weekly podcast anymore. It just has a good ring to it, bad joke mm-hmm. of the week. So, what I did is I went and I I gathered up every zombie bad joke that has been used on the show before. And I have eight of them. Wow. So I was going to let both of you roll a D8, and I will tell you a bad joke. <laughs> Do either of you have a D8 handy? Oh. I should have prepared you for this. I have a D4. We could also tell could Google. Twice. You could tell Google to roll Five. a D8 for you. Five? All right. Five. Oh, One, two, Mike's three, way four. Heady. Okay. Mike, <laughs> why did the zombie do so well on the test? Because he... he wants brains i don't know it was it was a he just ate some brains it was a no-brainer oh it was a no-brainer no no uh, uh, <laughs> uh, all right that's when i shot him your honor <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna roll my d4 twice all i right. ho- hope that's okay sure you just won't get there's no way you can roll number one, one. <laughs> oh i got a five two <laughs> all right roll again okay. re-roll re-roll Ooh, oh, this looks good. A six. A six. All right. Total of six. Chris, why didn't the zombie mm-hmm. get the job? <laughs> Be- because he ate the interviewer. They they wanted someone more lively. Uh, oh, that's worse than the one. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> if someone had told me it would be worse, I wouldn't have believed him. All right, I'm going to roll a D8. Oh, bit, oh boy! We'll get three jokes. <laughs> All right, I rolled. You know, if you want to, I rolled a four. Them, just... I rolled a four. Okay, oh, four, five, six. Awesome. <laughs> all right, y'all both can hit. What's black, white, and dead all over? <laughs> Night of the Living a Dead, nineteen sixty-eight. Zebra, <laughs> Zom- zebra, zeb zombri, zebra zombie. A zombie in a tuxedo. Oh, right. And tuxedo. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Your dates are here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. All right. And then as, as a special bonus bad joke, what does a zombie vegetarian eat? No idea. Tofu. Grains. <laughs> Grains. Uh, <laughs> tofu was a good answer, too. Uh, oh, oh, oh. oh, hey, one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot. Yep. The reason we're here is because of Levi Coombs and uh, not Le- yeah, Combs. Levi Coombs. <laughs> Levi Coombs and yeah. his interview with you, Shane. Oh, the Grindhouse yeah. Cinema. Yeah. yeah, I think that's whenever you started. Right. Yeah, you started saying, "Hey, because I got angry. I got angry that the zombie movies were thrown in with the other Grindhouse movies. So that's <laughs> you're like, inspired me. Right, I got to set this in justice. Right, to right. in and ask him to do a whole show on zombie movies because. They're highly important. Or genre important. It's actually an important genre because you can study it so is. much stuff. They've they've gone after communism. They've gone after commu- consumerism. They've gone after uh, all these social dynamics. I actually watched. I can't Boy remember. Scouts. The, yeah, Boy Scouts very important to explore the <laughs> themes of Boy Scouts with zombies. Uh, there, I watched a zombie movie that strippers. I wish it. Yeah, very important social theme. Um, Important to our times, crit- critical conversation. <laughs> there was a movie I saw, uh, and I can't remember the name of it, um, but they had come up with a zombie cure. And it was around, uh, uh, and if you had taken the cure, you had to carry a card. 
He said, I used to be a zombie, but I'm not anymore. And I take my medicine. Mm. And there was all these social dynamics. And, and then the medicine supply started getting low, right? So it was all these mm. people panicking and doing each other dirty to get their medicines. And that movie is 2013's The Returned. Not to be confused with the TV series of the same name. There's a lot you can do with zombie movies to explore, you know, social themes and and that sort of stuff. So, all right, Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, Guys, I really appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. So uh, thanks for having us on. Yep. But you are welcome. And don't folks, don't forget to check out found in the ruins, found in the like the (laughs) ruins podcast. You may find me again in the ruins. Yeah, you're coming on an upcoming episode. What do you What do you got? I, I know I mentioned Pace Setter Games and their stuff, Chris. Do you have anything else that you want to promote or talk about? Uh, I did. Uh, I did some drawings for a uh, adventure called uh, Return of the Ripper, a DCC adventure by Michael Davis. Cool. Which yep. just funded, so I guess that's coming out. Cool. And. Uh, Islands of Peril I dig by it. Um, my, my friend Bill Barsh. Yeah. Got Based Wearsharks? Based on my dad's. Uh, yeah, it has Wearsharks. Yes. Woo-hoo. Based on John Eric Holmes' uh, original Wilderness Adventures, Islands of Peril. Nice. Sweet. I think I bought that. On a at, what did I buy at North Texas? Was that not what I bought? That's what you yeah, bought. I thought yeah, so. you bought it. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, it's been a long episode, but dare I say an important, yeah. an important episode. Yeah. <laughs> dare I say. Thank right. you for letting a me read my stone. whole list. Yeah, okay. I'll post. If you don't Thank mind, you uh, in the show notes, I'll just post the whole list here if you're okay with that. So. I would be honored. All Thank right. you. Yep. Yep. I will do that. Uh, guys, uh, thanks so much for coming on. And everybody else, we will catch you next time on Shame Place. Mm-hmm. Yay. Free arc. They're us. We're them. They're us. Shut it! Thanks so much for listening to Shane Plays Geek Talk. I certainly hope you enjoyed this journey into the things we love. For your convenience, show notes with helpful links for each episode can always be found at shameplays.com. You can catch the podcast in several places, including on the blog at shameplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Podbean, Amazon Music, Verbal, YouTube, and more. If you like what you hear and would like to support Shane Plays Geek Talk, you can do so for as little as $1 per episode on Patreon at patreon.com slash shameplays. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Stay geeky, my friends.